Hello. Hi. <laughs> I am Virginia. And I'm Bianca. And we are the identical twins from the dying movie race. So how did you enjoy the Oscars be? <laughs> um, well, we loved the montages we yeah. were saying to each other. Definitely. That was like our favorite part. So we're like, I'm, I'm loving these montages. <laughs> and um, a lot of good people won because we saw some of the movies. Um, uh -huh. And we're going to keep watching them. Yeah. Um, we were just saying, unlike the other years where there was like maybe, you know, two one or, or two. <laughs> yeah, two or three movies that like really jumped out at us. So we were like, oh, we definitely got to see this. With this, we want to see pretty much them all. Yeah. They all look worth our time. So we are definitely going to try to catch, you know, looking at them, and maybe next year for Oscar month we can uh, maybe talk about some of them, our opinions on them, because hopefully mm -hmm. we'll have seen <laughs> all the ones we've wanted to at that point. Yeah. I know we're kind of getting late into this, but since we don't really have time to go to the movies... And we don't really watch a lot of new movies. Yeah, we have to obviously give our time to older movies, although we do want to see a lot of these movies. It's always... An we like to sometimes wait till after the awards so we know, like, which ones we really got to seek out, like, which ones have to be a priority. Mm hmm All right, so we're going to be talking about, and it's kind of coming out kind of late because of the weather last week, but we're going to be talking about uh, the picks for Best Picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, objectively, what should have won, and it's usually going to be pretty obvious, but we're also going to say, like, you know, what which out of the... Best Picture nominees we like personally, like me, like you know maybe our is our personal favorite or oh, just the bunch, yeah. yeah or just one that we personally we're we're like oh I I do wish this one, yeah this yeah. one won if it was a different year it would have been nice to see this win okay so let's take it away with the first Oscars and one with two categories yep Best Picture and Best Unique and Artistic Picture. Um, and there's actually some pretty good ones this year. I mean, you wouldn't think the first Oscars yeah. ceremony would have a lot of good ones, but they have silent films here, so that's nice. Yes. So for Best Picture, the nominees were The Racket, Seventh Heaven, and Wings. Um, and objectively, I can see why Wings won. Yeah. It's visually stunning. Um, Wild Bill is a treasure. <laughs> like, the actual, like, effects of it, it's the most impressive of the time. Our dog's at the door. Just give us a second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> Baxter, who do you think should have won? Yeah. You <laughs> That's like our wings? dog. You like Wings, Baxter? <laughs> All right. Wings is, a, Wings is a great movie to look at, isn't it, Baxter? <laughs> well, I think, yeah, when you're looking at, because none of the movies age very well, none of those three movies do, because there were other movies that came out both before and after that were better. Yeah. That are similar, like you can compare... Wings to the Big Parade, and obviously the Big Parade is a much better movie. But, and, like, the racket is sort of, like, you can comp compare it to Underworld, and Underworld's yeah, a better, better movie. movie. And also all these, you know, great gangster cops and gangster movies that came Absolutely. in the 30s, and they're better. Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. And Seventh Heaven doesn't age very well. I think Street yeah. Angel's the better movie, but um, and Lucky Star, Lucky Star, yes, my pride and joy. But I will not. But I'm not really gonna say anything bad about a fair normal movie no. on Charles Farrell, Jimmy Kimmel movie. That's what we call him. Yeah, but I think if you're we're looking at the if we are looking at this objectively, I don't know which one would be my favorite. Honestly, my favorite would probably be Seventh Heaven just for Fair Nor. <laughs> That's a good point. But uh, for their the the romantic scenes between them, sure. Yeah. But um, the I think, yeah, objectively, Wings is... Yeah, is the superior film. Yeah, it's... it The actual effects of it age very yeah. well. It's so, therefore, it ages and the, a little better. And just the direction, like, the um, running shots. Yeah. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh -huh. Like, just the aerial shots, like, how they had the cameras on the plane. Yeah. So, you feel like you're flying. Yeah, you do. It, yeah. The you can see the actors are actually yeah. in the planes. The, the which act is nice. The actual plot in itself is very thin for a two and a half hour movie, yeah. but the the action scenes are good. All right. For the unique and artistic picture, there was Chang, The Crowd, and Sunrise. Now that's difficult. <laughs> um, Sunrise won. Um, yeah, objectively, yeah, she probably should have. Yeah. Although The Crowd, is, King Vidor being like my favorite <laughs> director, The Crowd is one of my it's, favorite silent it's movies. It's a genius, genius work of art. Yeah. I honestly don't know whether I like Sunrise or the Crowd I, I, better. I can't personally, decide that either because they're both two. I think of the best silent movies ever, ever made, made. Ever. ever just the best movies ever made. They're two of the Absolutely. best movies Absolutely. ever made, and they 
I think they both more than deserve to be nominated. I'm glad they nominated the crowd, considering that it wasn't like this um, financial success yeah. at the time, because it is like this. It inspired Italian neorealism. <laughs> that like, so you kind of yeah. know what movie you're getting into. Yeah, very Bicycle Thieves or Umberto D, which was the big inspiration yep. for them. Mm-hmm. They sick a lot loved this movie. You can tell, but yeah, it's. It's hard to say, like, which one I personally prefer, but yeah, object- too. And objectively speaking, just by Slither, it's not like it's by a lot. Objectively yeah. speaking, it's probably Sunrise, and, but both are so, like, the stories are simple, but amazing in both of them. Visually the vis- stunning. Visually, the some of the best movies ever. Excellent. Excellent. It, they both age, like, you know, fine wine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, now we get to some, um... Interesting year. <laughs> okay. Well, at least one interesting year. The next one's pretty damn easy. Yeah. Um, There's one. <laughs> yeah. I'm um, in yeah. 1928 to 1929. The nominees were Alibi, The Broadway Melody, which won The Hollywood Review in Old Arizona, and The Patriot. I'm guessing The Patriot was the best yeah, movie. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think so too. I um, mean, it doesn't exist except for the trailer, but it looks nice from the trailer. It's, it's the silent movie, and it was directed by Ernst Lubitsch. It was probably the best. And movie. even though Alibi is very um, visually, archaic, yeah. but visually incredibly yeah. stunning for early talking. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's almost like it looks like a German film in some yeah. scenes. So, which one objectively? Because we can't go with The Patriot. Which one should have won? <laughs> oh my. I mean, I could definitely see why the Broadway Melody won. For the time, yeah. Like, if I'm looking at this at the time period, yeah. yes. At, it, age, it doesn't age well. It look, it doesn't look good Like, the now. Hollywood Review looks just as good as that does. Yeah. And that one actually has more, and that one has star power to it. But. Yeah. The difference is this one, like... Has a plot? <laughs> has a plot, yeah. It has, like... However thin it may be. It has people who can actually sing and dance in it, like, whereas the Hollywood Review put people who were uncomfortable with yeah. singing and dancing, they put their stars in it. Although some of them are pretty good. Sure, obviously some had a background, like Joan Crawford had a background yeah. and that sort of thing, but um, some are kind of uncomfortable in it. Yeah, yeah. Like, when they're singing, singing in the rain, that some of them forget the words. Like, yeah. It's that type of movie where, okay, they were all forced to be here, and it's obvious none of them yeah. really want to be here. It's one of those movies that it's like, a kind of weird pleasure for me because I have a pleasure yeah. with these sort of old star reviews. You wrote, you wrote a you post know, yeah. about it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like none of them are can't even breathe the with yeah. the King of Jazz, but the, they're you, entertaining. You said that's the only one that's like objectively great. You know, it's more than great. It's yeah, fantastic. Where you said like the other ones have their moments, but you couldn't exactly. really call them good. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So I can't. So I I would just say the Broadway Melody for this year because for the time yeah. period. Yeah. Because even like for the Hollywood Review, it has some pretty good moments that make it. Um, and it's one I would definitely like to own just for the pure. Yeah. yeah sure. Just because also my favorite actor and actress are in it together, yeah. which is nice. But yeah, I Broadway Melody is the better movie. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not saying. Too much because yeah. none of them are great. But, but it need a uh, page is in it, so it has that. That is for true. It. <laughs> Anita Page is in this movie, so it's so better than a movie that how, doesn't have yeah, Anita exactly. Page. How bad can it be if Anita Page is in it? <laughs> so, the, but all these nominees this year, this is like the well at the time. What would you have picked? Yeah. Because none of these age well. Then for best director, you have the Divine Lady. Which if that was nominated, I would pick be easy. It would be we would we would be done. And we're in River. That'd be yeah. easy. I picked that one easily too. Yeah, yeah just. One that knew what it was doing, and it one like, that looked nice. That, the Divine Lady still looks really nice. Yeah, so, yeah. That's a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 1929 to 1930. The nominees are All Quiet on the Western Front, which won The Big House, Disraeli, The Divorcee, and The Love Parade. And I will never ever say a word, a single word against Old Kind of Western Front. Try to think of something wrong with it. You can't because no. it's perfect. <laughs> it ages extremely well. All the other ones are very of their time. They're, I yeah. like them. Like I yeah. like the big house and I like Boy. yeah. I love the love the love parade is amazing, but that's a lot of fun. Yeah, but when we're looking at movie these movies now, yeah. Old Kind of Western Front is like the only one that has aged beautifully. Like, it's, it even, st- it's still one of the best movies ever made. Yeah, like, I mean, when I wrote my blog post about my opinions on the Best Picture winners, I said, compare this one to Wings and The Broadway Melody. Yeah. Both of which we say, we picked because at the time they were good, yeah. but they don't age very well. This 
movie doesn't have that problem. It was great at the time and it's great now. This is one I could pick objectively and personally. Me too. Me too. There's not a false note in it. Um, and I mean, for the time too, it this is really a one of a kind, a wonder. Um, yeah. A revelation. And I do like the Love Parade a lot, but I like Monte Carlo and Me the Crown Lieutenant. Me too. All those better. Me too. I think that, yeah, like, I think with the Love Parade, the one, the big thing I really like about Lupino it is Lupino Lane and Lillian yeah. Roth in it because they're hilarious. They are. But I think that, like, whereas. And the songs are delightful. Yeah, they're delightful. But, you know, you compare it to, like, Monte Carlo, where it has more of the complete package. Yeah, it really does. Where it has. All the actors are, you know, equally delightful. Mm -hmm. and no one, like, really steals the spotlight away from anyone. It's just a fun movie. Yeah. And it's, although Claude Alistair certainly gives everyone <laughs> a run for their money in that one, but yeah. But I think that, whereas, oh, Claude on the Western Front, the everyone is amazing. Yeah. The, the performance of their careers. Yeah, everyone's really good in it. And Lewis Milestone's direction is absolutely stunning. He's um, one of the wonders of the time period e yeah. and ever, too. He's one hell of a director. I it's not said nearly enough. I think um, there are a few directors who, at the turn of the talkies, I say, you know, were, like, the leading examples of how to handle a talkie when they were first coming yeah. out. King Vidor is obviously one of yeah, them. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, and um, Milestone is definitely one of them. And they said this is his film. Like, it, it, it yeah. was really his vision. Yeah. And all the actors liked him. He was a delightful man to work for, yeah. too. Yeah, I heard that, too. And yeah. he also did A Walk in the Sun, so he knows how to do war films. He knows how, yeah, exactly. Because these, um, this view of war and the way he handles it and the way it's portrayed ages perfectly. Yeah. 1930 to 1931, the nominees were Cimarron, which won, East Lynn, The Front Page, Skippy, and Trader Horn. And we have um, two particularly standout ones this year, The Front Page and The Trader Horn. I'd say objectively Front Page is the best. Yeah, I, mean. I think objectively, yeah, it is The Front Page, and personally I would say probably Trader Horn. Personally, I don't know. It would be. It would. Tough. Those are both good ones. Um, yeah. I, I guess since I compare, you have to compare the front to page his girlfriend. To, yeah. So I guess maybe personally. And also, um. Trader Horn. And also, maybe. you kind of wish you could see Lee Tracy in the front page too. Yeah. I love. I do like Pat O'Brien. Well, no, I lot, would, I yeah, love Pat O'Brien. Yeah. And I like uh, Adolf Mendrew is hilarious. He today, is. But, he yeah. is. Um, I think, but. His Girl Friday, obviously nobody's going to argue. It's so it's kind of hard to watch it and not think of His Girl Friday. Yeah, definitely. And Trader Horn, you can't really compare Trader Horn to anything else. Maybe Tarzan, but... Yeah, but all those movies took from Trader Horn, and that's the difference. Exactly. Yeah. It was like the King Solomon's Minds of the 30s. It is. How everything took from King Sol... The 1950s version of took King footage. Solomon's Minds, and everyone took the footage from it. And everyone every took the footage from 1 million BC. Yeah, exactly. This is that type... This is that movie for this... For 1930. And it's 31. a lot of fun seeing yeah. the old footage of the animals too. Like, because uh -huh. these filmmakers are actually there. So it's yeah. very interesting to see it. Yeah, no, the shots look, look nice. They're not very yeah. nice, yeah. And it was hell making it, but you would never know by watching yeah. the movie. It's just not Cimarron. <laughs> not Cimarron. <laughs> <laughs> but Anime Oliver's in yeah, it. Like, when I wrote about this movie, I said, it's, it's like, it has entertaining moments, but it's not like, you know, it's not Oscar worthy at all. Yeah. Like, and I've mentioned this too, how everybody. I can see why the other ones were nominated, but not Yeah, this, definitely, you know. but not this one. I don't get what I said. It's one that I look back at and I think, in me who knows, you know, a lot about old movies, I look back at this one and I think, what was the big deal with this? Because I get what was the big deal with Wings and the Prowry Melody. Yeah. You're... But what was the big deal with Cimarron? It does, no it does nothing we haven't seen before. And everyone talks about the Land Rush opening. How great the Land Rush opening is. Tumbleweeds. Yeah. I always say, Tumbleweeds did it way better. Because to me, the, the Land Rush opening in Cimarron looks fake. The Land Rush mm -hmm. opening in Tumble Reads looks real because it, it like, is real. they actually are on these horses and they're in the Wild West and they're, you know, running to get the land. It's just, it's just everything we've seen in this movie, we've seen them better before. Well, 30s Western is not going to stand up to silent Westerns and mm -hmm. the later Westerns of the 40s and 50s. Even like just a couple years later in the 30s. Well, even the we big trail yeah. came before this, and that's a way better movie. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it doesn't... Both visually and story-wise. Yeah, it doesn't, like... Some of its ideas don't age well, but yeah. it's... A, it is, I would say... It's, it's still a good movie. It looks better than Cimarron does, yeah. 
1931-1932, the nominees were Aerosmith, Bad Girl, The Champ, Five Star Final, Grand Hotel, which won One Hour With You, Shanghai Express, and The Smiling Lieutenant. Now we get into some pretty hard to yeah. decide territory. Although I gotta say, both objectively and personally, Grand Hotel. Um, I would I would say that too, actually, although The Smiling Lieutenant is one of my favorite movies. Yeah. Shanghai and Shanghai Express. Express yeah, I can watch that. that. And we love The Champ. Too. Yeah, I love The Champ, love Shanghai Express. These are, these all, are, all, the these are all good movies. Um, yeah, they're all like... Some, well, Aerosmith and Bad Girl. Yeah. Like, that's, those Bad are girl's, two. Uh, Bad Girl's okay. Yeah, but those are two people say just don't age very well. Yeah, no. Like, that's the thing. You say, oh, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, what about all these other films? I feel like Bad Girl's a better name. book than it is a movie. Aerosmith, too. Because yeah. since Sarah Lewis did it, and his oh, well, books are great. Amazing, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, and he ages well, actually, so it's yeah. amazing that his movie, I his know. movie doesn't. Um, and Five Star Final doesn't age particularly well, but I like it. I, I actually really like that Me movie. too. I like it. I think that, uh, you know, granted, Edward G. Robinson's a lead in anything with Edward G. Robinson. <laughs> I, I'm will, probably gonna, I will watch I'm it. I'm <laughs> probably going to like it. It's probably going to be good. And Aline McMahon's in it, who's one of our favorite great. characters. And Boris actresses. Karloff, yeah. Yeah, Boris Karloff, don't we love him? Yeah, it's it's an enjoyable movie, and I totally get why it was nominated for Best Picture at the time, more so than, some, you know, like yeah. something like... I guess you can say bad girl. Or like that. everything from the champ down is a movie I really like. Yeah, that I full heartedly recommend. Yeah. Whether you are just getting into old movies, where and if you're yeah, a big fan of old movies, you've probably seen all of them before. But yeah, um, but I'd say Grand Hotel is the high point it of the is. list. It, it's definitely the best film of the year. I I love it. I can watch it a million times, and I have seen it many, many times. And, and I also love, like, Separate Tales and Ship of Fools, you know, yeah. oh, so many great movies yeah. took off from this. Th this is, it started the, all, the all-star roster. And Dinner at Eight, obviously. Yeah, obviously, it's, the most obvious, one, yeah. yeah. But they're all so fun, and we all yeah. go to Grand Hotel, which Grand Hotel, I, I'm, and every time I talk about it, I say, yeah, it's melodramatic, but will you care? Nope, because it... You will be having the time of your you life like, watching it. You like the characters, so yeah. therefore when something like that happens, when them, you're interested. When melodramatic things happen, you are interested. Yeah. Particularly Lionel Barrymore, he's really the standout of this I, film. I, I think so. I think both Barrymores in this are really I know. Good. Everybody I think, always talks yeah. about Greta Garbo. I'm like, oh, the Barrymores. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah the Barrymores, I'd say, walk away with this movie. But yeah, Lionel, probably the most... One of his finest hours on screen, which is really saying something. De de yeah, definitely. <laughs> and he's playing, and you know, not playing a jerk. This is at the time yeah. he played like a lot of the really little nice meek man. Yeah, and this is the the best of those type of parts he played because he yeah, played a couple is, of yeah. them. But this is like the best, and where the character love that, the most. Interesting. I love how the film handles him too. The story is. Excellent. The, the story of this We went through a lot amazing. of ones that don't yeah. have good stories, with the exception of All Cry in the Western Front, and yes. this one has a great story. This one, the story, and it's not like, and even when, like, unlike something like the front page, where you can't help but compare it to His Girl Friday or Trader Horror, where you can't help but compare it to Jungle Films of later years that were better, like King yeah. Solomon's Minds. You can the Tarzan movies. Yeah, the Tarzan movies that were just, like, a year later. Yeah. You can't. When you're watching Grand Hotel, you're not like, oh, well, it was better when, you know, Separate Tables did it, or when Dinner at Eight did it. No, it was, you know. It was different, but it wasn't, I mean. Yeah, I wanted to say, that, I wanted to say they were better than They Grand were on Hotel. equal footing, I think. Yeah, if anything, equal footing. Not, and not, Ship of Fools, equal yes. footing. Yeah, I wouldn't say any of them surpass Grand no, Hotel. No, they're all wonderful together. Yeah. <laughs> A trendsetter that actually, you know, still is at the top of the trend. Yeah. 1932 to 1933, another very good year. Um, there was Cavalcade, which won, A Farewell to Arms, 42nd Street, I Was a Fugitive from a Chain Gang. That I one. Am a Fugitive from a Chain Gang, That bet. one. Yeah, obviously we're going with that one, but we have to name all of them. <laughs> okay. But... Lady for a Day, Little Woman, The Private Life of Henry VIII, She Done Him Wrong, Smiling Through, and State Fair. See, pretty good ones, except for Great. Cavalcade, which one? I mean, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's fun, it's beautiful yeah, looking. But... Those, and the montages are great, but it's very elitist. It's <laughs> Dude, kind yeah, of... I was going to say, we're going to have to talk about it. I know, Cavalcade. it's kind of a turn-off just how elitist it is. Uh, I, I was right. And classist. Like, when I was watching this movie, and I really, really wanted to like it, because Noel Coward and, you know, I he. You know, it's mm -hmm. one best picture. I want to like it. But then I'm watching it, and I'm like, I cannot connect to these characters. They are, like... They're high, these high class characters. I can't personally yeah. connect to them. And a, a good movie about like I, I was connecting to the the, the lower, lower class, class characters, characters the most. At least they yeah. were fun. And how like they're supposed to be um like uh you know gaudy and like off putting. But I'm like 
<laughs> They're not bothering you. What do yeah. you care? <laughs> like, do, does Una O'Connor, does her moving up in the world affect Diana Winwood? Yeah. No, it doesn't. So why does she care? Who's usually a very likable actress. Yeah, no. And there's nothing wrong with yeah, the no, performances. I, yeah. Yeah. Um, they give the parts what they need. And, like, the parts are full. And the direction is, but the direction is amazing. amazing. I could definitely see why Frank Lloyd yeah. won, and I love him as a director. I get why, like, the sets won. The sets yeah, everything beautiful. else is stunning. It's just that story. The, the story and the As much as we love Noel Coward, yeah. it was a bit of a turn it, It's It's definitely on it doesn't him, age. And I hate to say it. It doesn't age well. No, it's just these upper class characters. I don't connect to them. I don't find that their issues like very how, relatable. Yeah, I don't find like how their problems take front and center. I'm like, well, shouldn't we be focused? Like, it's not like I was much more interested in the lower the, class, the characters. downstairs characters. Yeah, but I'm like, whereas. You can make the upper class characters relatable and interesting, yeah. But don't make them like, and you can make them snobby and still make them interesting. Yeah. But when they're com- when I completely just didn't care for them, I, I mean, just... there's the whole upstairs, downstairs, Gosford Park sort of thing that yeah. was managed to do this much better. Well, all these, uh, and I haven't seen Down the Abbey, but I know a lot of people will compare this movie mm-hmm. to that and say, and my I'd much mo- rather watch that. I'd rather watch it. I guess I'd rather watch it, too. Um, Maggie's missing it. So. <laughs> well, our, our mother watches Down and Abby, so she's told us about it. And from what I gather from it, it's one of those where you can connect with both sides. Yeah. and Like upstairs, downstairs. Just like, yeah. But I'm like, so why wasn't this movie like that? Why am I, Why, if any of them, do I relate to the downstairs yeah. characters? Because I don't particularly relate to many people in this movie, but at least their problems I felt were serious. Yeah. Like, I like um, the other every other film that I made better. Me, too. Um, and we both said I'm um, a fugitive from a chain gang is one that we would pick um, personally and objectively. Yes, uh, we we've talked about this in the pre in our previous post. Well, we we one chose Paul Muni as best, best actor. actor. Yeah, we both picked him, and we said it's our favorite prison movie, which is saying something because we love prison movies. Yep, and I think that it's you know it's aged pretty flawlessly. It has, oh yeah, it has pre it has all the pre code flair that you would want because yeah. it's so like the way it deals with violence and the without way it, it being like look at this it's shocking yeah isn't it? i want to shock i want audience. to shock you <laughs> shocking equals good <laughs> if i shock them they'll like it because then they'll be a- afraid to say if they don't like it then they then they're not they they're gonna look the like stomach. Prunes. yeah <laughs> <laughs> they don't have the stuff a lot of modern it. movies do that yeah it, that gets on my nerves but even this... the movies i kind of like <laughs> yeah, yeah me too yeah. but this one is um really just down to earth yeah um you connect on it so you connect with the character even though he's in a situation you hope you'd never you would never be in yeah um but you still feel every emotion he's feeling and you just and you want to just Bust the teeth. Yeah. You want to say, "Oh my God, give the guy a break!" <laughs> and one of the best endings in cinema uh, history. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was an accident. And thank uh, the luckiest accident. I know. <laughs> and the yeah. universe saw a chance and it took it. <laughs> it's like when how Uncle Billy running into the cans and um, yeah, it's a wonderful <laughs> life is an accident. And and then Thomas Mitchell just went with it. Yeah, <laughs> he just keeps saying, "I'm all right. I'm all right." I'm like. That is amazing. Yeah. The fact that it's a mistake makes it even better, and that's, I feel like, yeah, this ending. Yeah. 1934, oh gee, what will we go with? <laughs> I don't know, it's so difficult. It's not like there was one big standout. It's not like a one or anything. <laughs> okay, so the nominees were The Barrett's of Wimple Street, Cleopatra, Flirtation Walk, The Gay Divorcee, Here Comes the Navy, The House of Rothschild, Imitation of Life, It Happened One Night, Which One, One Night of Love, The Thin Man, Viva Wheela, and The White Parade. Obviously a great list. Viva um, Villa. Yeah. So, yeah, you said the Latin term. Oh, Vila, I'm yeah. sorry. Force a habit. Viva Vila. <laughs> You're like, what are you saying? That for like that? You were like, looked at me like, wait, what? <laughs> Did you just pick that? No, <laughs> no I was like, I yeah. thought you were just talking about how much you liked it because it's a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sorry, force a habit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously, but we're going with that happy one night, although The Thin Man is also one of our favorite movies. The Thin Man's easily the runner-up. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of movies this year I like, but that one would yeah. be the runner-up. I mean, The Gay Divorce is obviously great. I do like Tim Mill's Cleopatra a lot. Yeah, but, um, that's the best one of it. Ever. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, it has real, you know, stiff competition, but yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Happen One Night is every, it's the perfect romantic comedy. Um, and mm-hmm. the, 
that term today is really put through the mill because of all the bad movies that's come out recently of romantic comedy. Back then, romantic comedy was an art form. It yeah. had Spencer Tracy, Catherine Hepburn, Claudette Colbert. It had the best. Yeah. The time. Carrie Grant. You know? Barbara Stanwyck. Yeah. Preston Sturgis did romantic comedies. People like that. Yeah. You know, you you had amazing romantic comedies. And this is like the best I, of them, It's yeah. the pinnacle of the great romantic comedies of the classic era. If you need, if you need to restore your faith in the romantic comedy genre, just watch this. Like, and I totally, it's, I totally get how um it inspired Stool's doing so today. And it helped inspire the screwball genre. Too. Yeah, exactly. It's almost like a lot of people even say it's one of the main trendsetters, even though, like, it, the film in itself is not a screwball, but it, the way it's, um, the way some of the, the jokes are structured. Of the yeah, characters. exactly. The love hate. Like, exactly. at first they hate each other, the then they love each other. The belligerent sexual tension yeah. is totally a screwball. The story in itself is romantic comedy, but a lot of the situations they get into are screwball esque. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, um. Having pretend they're married, that's a big screwball. Yeah. My, my, maybe my favorite scene in the movie. Too. Mine too. Yeah. Um, but they. They, um. When I do you see- You didn't make a pass at me, you were drunk! <laughs> <laughs> Quit balling! Um, too bad you're not looking for a plumber starter. <laughs> but, um... So, this movie, again, inspired a lot of movies. And the the only bad thing about this movie is it's inspired some really bad yeah, movies. Which is not the movie's no, fault. No, not about the movie's fault, but it's like, oh, it started- the line of many shitty rom-coms to come. I know, every rom-com today is like, well, we could be good if we steal from It Happened One Night. Because no. It Happened One Night's a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> no. And the audience won't be thinking, oh, gee, I wish I was watching It Happened One Night right It's now. like people saying, let's make another Cleopatra movie, because if Cecil B. DeMille can do it, <laughs> we can. Because, <laughs> you know, it's so easy to top Cecil B. <laughs> yeah. in terms of entertainment. Why not? Well, let's mess with perfection. Why don't we do that? <laughs> That's but, what people do. Yeah, exactly. Or the Thin Man, like every who done today. Like, well, if we take place in the thirties, we'll naturally be the Thin Man. <laughs> <laughs> How they were gonna remake that? Remember, we were planning on boycotting it, and we luckily were. they never did. Oh, I'm so so happy. But there's know. so many that did actually did go through. Yeah. <laughs> so the thing was, no one will ever remake a Happen One Night, but people will steal from it. And literally, the only bad thing I can say about this movie is that terrible, terrible movies have gotten influence from this. Mm -hmm. And that, again, not the movie's fault. It is yeah. unoriginal. A lot of good ones did, too. Yeah, it is unoriginal producers and screenwriters' fault yeah. who don't know what to do with you know, a genre that has a lot of um, leeway. But, but inspired a lot of people at the time to make good movies. Yeah. Uh, none of them as good as this. No. But, yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, this is as good as it gets. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like there's a joke that Claudia Colbert says at, <laughs> yeah Frank when Frank Capra got the light the American Film Institute Lifetime Achievement Award Claudia Colbert was there and she was talking about it happened one night and she said there were many many imitators and none of them could compare to happen one night I should know I started many of them <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> yeah. and I like them because Claudia yeah, Colbert I would like who doesn't anything. like them but yeah I mean love her. But admittedly, yeah, they're they're no half of one night. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever can be, nothing. Yeah. Let's just admit it, nothing. Nothing. Let's just say the script, the direction, the acting, the story, everything about it works and it's timeless. It's all part of Western Front of Romantic Comedies. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, nineteen thirty five. Armies are a good list. Alice Adams, Frawley Melody of 1936, Captive Blood, David Copperfield, The Informer, Les Miserables, Lives of a Bangle Lancer, A Midsummer Night's Dream, Muni on the Bounty, Which One, Naughty Marietta, Ruggles a Red Gap, and Top Hat. All right, so what would you go with? Both obje What would you go with objectively? David Copperfield. It's one of my Me favorite too. movies. Yeah, I, I love it. And we saw this for the first time when we read the book in high school, and I read it, Bianca skimmed it. But I liked it and you didn't. Yeah, because Charles Dickens' writing is really annoying, and there's a million, it can be. Si there's a million side plots That's in That's what happens when you skim. You skim past yeah. it. <laughs> that that would have been nice, but I, I, I feel bad when I do things like that, <laughs> so I have to read it. <laughs> uh, so, I think that 
But this movie trims all that fat out. It does. And it just gives you the good stuff. I remember, like, I thought the most boring part was when he was at school, because I thought, That's, I thought it'd yeah, be so me interesting. Too. I but was, it wasn't. I was looking forward to that, and then, like, because to me, reading the book, like, in the book, not in the movie, I think the whole thing works. In the book, I liked his childhood the best. Yeah. So once it got to the school, I was like, this should be interesting, and I was like, this part could... I know, I'm like, it's yeah. grown up yet. Yeah. But in the movie, that's not even in it. No, <laughs> I guess they, they thought can... it, I thought, I, I guess they yeah. thought it was boring, too. <laughs> Clearly they did. They were like, is this really important? Yeah, they just cut <laughs> all that stuff out. He goes to school and then it's it's done. Because I remember when I first watched this movie, I was like, oh great, this part. The part <laughs> I really hated in the book. And nope, it didn't come. <laughs> no. <laughs> it skips right over it. I was like, oh, oh thank god. And it's the best cast movie ever. Yep. One of the best cast movies ever made. We often say so. It's just... Oh, like, the, it, along with the Grapes of Wrath. Um, yeah. It, they're how, just how you would picture it, reading it. Yeah, totally. They are... Like reading the book and the description, even the way, they, the way yeah, they act. I know, even yeah. the way they describe them. Like, are you sh- are you sure you're not describing? Yeah, like Mr. McCaver, you're like that sounds <laughs> like W. C. Fields yeah. and then Emma Person, Roland Young, very oh, different from yeah. their casual Roland Young roles. I yeah, love Roland Young. One, I think it's one of his. It might be one of his most um, memorable parts. I think and, so. Yeah. yeah. And we're just saying something because he's always wonderful. Yeah. And Emma Oliver is an aunt. Is Don't we love her? Brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. Heartwarming, yeah. Totally. yeah, wonderful Basil Rathbone. Oh, he, he is... bites, doesn't he? <laughs> um, and uh, said, um, Maureen O'Sullivan's probably her finest hour on screen as the dumb Dora, yeah, literally a dumb Dora, yeah. Um, it's it's just one like we can gush about the actors in this forever yeah. because all these performances and all like I'm so glad they went with the actors they picked, yeah, because you can see about Bas- you. Like, because some of them you could totally picture, like, Basil Rathbone and NMA Oliver. But That's some, just how I pictured them. Yeah, but some, like, while you you reading the book, you can see W.C. Fields. Like, at the time, it was probably, like, W.C. Fields in, yeah. like, a Charles Dickens movie, but I'm so glad it they worked. did it. Yeah. <laughs> and with um, Roland Young. As, that's not, that's yeah, not a Roland right. Young part. He, definitely not. You don't read... Uh, you don't read the book and go, you know who should play Uriah Heep? Rolling Young. Yeah. yeah, you think The like, guy from the pleasant yeah. romantic comedy. You you <laughs> think like J. Carol Nash or something like yeah. that. But I'm so oh, yeah, I'm yeah. so glad they went with Rolling Young because he mm-hmm. offers something different and to this voice, role. And that voice, that <laughs> tiny little voice yeah. of his. It's it's amazing. He puts on a voice, it's funny. And Una O'Connor. <laughs> hilarious. hilarious. And she's an poor, miserable creature. <laughs> uh, Personally. All right, uh, top hat. <laughs> uh, I knew I, she would go with. I have hat. to go with that. Um, it's on a personal level. It means a lot to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do like Swing Time probably a little better. They're almost I like neck Swing and Time neck, <laughs> but because Jerome Kern did, I think that it, this one that inches this one out a little bit. But I think this one's their funniest one. Yeah. Um, I I love. Oh well, Carefree's their funniest one. Oh yeah, it, that, along with Carefree, I would say because um. Just Edward Everett Horton in this one yeah. and Eric Rhodes, yeah. all of them, they're so funny. And actually, it's very quotable. Virginia and I quote this movie to each yeah. other all the time, actually. It, like, oh, the store, you know, <laughs> things like that. It definitely has the most essential Stair Rogers cast in it. Yeah. Like, all the actors you know best for Stairs mm-hmm. and Rogers, they're all here, you know? Yeah. Um, for me personally, uh, I have difficult time choosing between David Copperfield and um, Lives of a Bangle Lancer. I like so many of the nominees this year. This is a, a lot, tough A year. lot of great ones, because I also love Alice Adams. Yeah. That's one of them. Uh- I love Captain Blood. Yeah. Yeah. I love Mutiny on the Bounty. Rogue was a red gap. Delightful. Yeah, delightful. Naughty Marietta has a special place yeah, in my heart. Yeah, the informer's great with the, yeah. the shots. Like, I, I'm a sucker for I shots I can like see that. why yeah. every one of these is nominated. Totally. Every one of them. But I think that, um, but for me personally, again, it's so difficult picking between David Copperfield and Liza Bang and Lester because they're totally different movies. Yeah. I, yeah. Different tones yeah. completely. I I like well, Lives of a Bangle Lancer is kind of the first in like the Gunga Din type of line. It where is it's like the humorous, boisterous type of. I know you always Bangle do Lancer movie with Gunga Din. Yeah, yeah, and again, three guys too. Like, yeah, Gunga Din, and I love Gunga Din <laughs> so much. <laughs> <Justin>. <laughs> yeah, and I I like. So I was super excited when I first saw this, and I was totally yeah. into it when I first saw it. I was like, yeah, having so much fun watching it. And that's, I think, the thing with, yeah, I... And Franco Tone's in it, so... Yeah, and Gary Cooper, where they're, like, a married couple, basically, like, the way they bicker is the front page. And he asked for two better-looking men in a movie, in a yeah. single movie. But I... Uh, it's so difficult to pick between them, I guess. Yeah. 
For for just for the record, I guess I'll pick one. Close my eyes. <laughs> Uh, I'll go with Lives of Bangle Lancer for now. David Co- since you picked David since, since Copperfield. You, that's literally why. Objective, <laughs> that's yeah. probably why, because I feel like I'm leaving out the other one I really yeah. liked. Yeah. 1936, the nominees were Anthony Adverse, Dawsworth, The Great Ziegfeld, which won, Live Old Lady, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, Romeo and Juliet, San Francisco, The Story of Louis Pasteur, A Tale of Two Cities, and Three Smart Girls. Again, these years are hard. <laughs> Okay, they're all. It's not, it's not like in. It's not like later on where you just have to pick between five dramas yeah. so you can compare all of them. These are ten. They're ten all amazing. They're, they're all amazing and they're all different from each other. I know. I could see why every again. I could see why every one of them was nominated. Um, all of them affected me in such a deep mm-hmm. way mm-hmm. for different reasons. All right, objectively, what would you go with? Objectively, yeah. Maybe Dodsworth. I'd say it's between Dodsworth and Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. I was between that and A Tale of Two Cities. Oh, I, I love that one too. But yeah, I, I gotta um, go with. I'm gonna go with Dodsworth. Uh, I think I do think Mr. Deeds Goes to Town is the harder film to get right because it's, yeah, yeah, we've seen it done wrong <laughs> because <laughs> there is literally a remake of it that is garbage. But um, I. <sighs> But also, Dodsworth is the type of movie that Hollywood just doesn't make anymore. And that, so, it was Mr. Make, so was Mr. Deeds. Well, <laughs> it didn't, they hardly even made it then. I mean, it's very adult. Um, yeah. I think that's why I chose it, too, because it's just so unique. For the, There's yeah. nothing really like it. Yeah. I, I, yeah, sure, I'll go with it. Objectively, why not? Okay. Now, personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not easy. I'm going to go with Flyable Lady, because that's I, one I of my, yeah, that's that one one. my all-time favorite movies. Um, And I think it's one of the smartest comedies ever written and most complex. Again, I'm... <laughs> I am between Level Lady and Mr. D's Goes to Town. Those yeah. are the ones I like. Yeah, to, I can go back and watch those yeah, me, yeah, me forever. Too. Well, for me, like that, and also Three Smart Girls because I've seen that. Yeah, a times. <laughs> we have seen that one a lot. You especially, but yeah. Uh, that's where I she, like Deanna that's Durbin where she movies. Bushes and things. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Deanna Durbin movies. So. <laughs> She's one of my favorite people. Yeah. Um. <laughs> see, because they're both so funny. They are. They are. Yeah. I. I. I'll just. Mm, I, mm, <laughs> I like to quote both of them. We quote Libel Lady a lot. Yeah, we do. Uh, oh, Beal, there's a telegram <laughs> for you. <laughs> um, I think, uh, I guess I'll go with Mr. G's Ghost of Town because it warms my heart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Libel Lady so, so much. Yeah. But, I mean, after I see Mr. G's Ghost of Town, I feel like a million dollars. Yeah, you know, every Gary. Yeah, no matter how many times I see it, I feel like a million dollars after I watch it. And most of the other ones do that too, but I feel like they the, do. the high this one gives me is a little higher. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. 1937, the nominees are The Awful Truth, Captain's Courageous, Dead End, The Good Earth, and Old Chicago, The Life of Emil Zola, Lost Horizon, 100 Men and a Girl, Stage Door, and A Star is Born. Again, a really good year. Yeah. <laughs> really Again, good these list. years, these the late 30s and early 40s are really, really tough years. Best years for movies ever. Yeah, yeah definitely. All right, so objectively. Objectively, I'm going to go with The Winner, The Life of Emil Azola. Me too. I was between that and The Good Earth. Me um, too. Yeah. <laughs> both Paul Muni movies. Um, I think The Life of Emil Azola um, is... Um, superior on every single level um and this is one that you just get so passionate watching you don't think yeah. you would get passionate in a movie like this about an author and it's not even about him writing books it's about him yeah. trying to get an innocent man out of devil's island but it's incredibly rousing um and it you just are with him all the way and it's so smart absolutely like how we like Dodsworth. it's smart. yeah exactly this is written for um this is written to um inform Mm-hmm. And so, and it's a great tribute to a famous writer. Mm-hmm. Yes. And a very influential and important one at that. And how. Um, okay. One who saved a man's life. So, yeah. that is so, so he's already awesome. Because yeah. <laughs> he uses his celebrity for it. It's a, it's a very interesting story. Yeah. Um, personally, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> 
Personally, oh god, I thought I had and I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of those. It is definitely one of those years where you're like, I think you got it. But... Um, personally, I'm gonna go with probably the Good Earth. Yeah. Um. I'm... I, I, it's, and I know a lot of people, like, tell them to look back at this and they're like, oh my goodness, like, what is this? Like, um, you know, um. Well, yeah, the yellow face doesn't yeah. age well, but. But a lot, but you, also a lot of, um, actual Chinese actors are in it, which is was rare for the time. True, And it was the 30s, and they needed names in it. I think if you can get past the yellow face, you're. It's, it's, yeah. And yeah, it, you're it's, in good. It's such yeah. an interesting story. If you're really just focusing on that, you're, you just are not. Don't watch it then. Yeah, just don't I, even watch exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. The movie deserves more your attention. Yeah. It's a, it's a fantastic story. Um, the sets are, um, amazing. Um, it, and it really pulls you in. You care about these characters. You see their lives. And it has amazing actors. Um, so even if, they're not actually Chinese. They are great actors. I mean, Paul Muni and Louise Rayner, and they make a great couple. I wish they made more movies together, actually, because mm -hmm. they, they're very yeah. similar in type um, and very intelligent actors to watch. All right, for me personally, uh, well, Lawful Truth's the one I've seen the most, but yeah. I think I'll. Uh, My dreams are just gone with the wind. <laughs> I think uh, Captain's Courageous is the one that touches me. I think I, the I, most. Yeah, I have to that one. Too, well, yeah. it warms my heart. I know. I, <laughs> like just I, like I cry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it warms my heart, but I cry too. <laughs> <laughs> it breaks it as well. <laughs> that that is true. That's why I like it though. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, A good movie can do that. <laughs> yeah, it has like well, just like the good earth. It has nice moments and it has just depressing moments. Yeah. And I like the way um, Spencer Tracy and Freddie Barfalling you play off each other. That's like a similar way why I really like the champ. Yeah, is because absolutely. the way they play off each other, they both are amazing. Yes. <laughs> like, um, and I think that uh, I, I didn't pick Spencer win best actor, even though he did, because I think it's really a two. I think it's a two yeah, yeah. type of performance, like where I, I think they he really knew it too. Each other. He met, he said, and again with voice really talent, which that. he also wanted for that, really it requires both of them. I good. I totally agree. It's a two person. Movie. He, uh, especially Tracy said the only reason I won that award was because of Freddie. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's funny, but I think it also shows that, you know, yeah, it is because the story is both of them, how they both, like, Freddie changes over time, and Spencer in a small way does, because he grows a connection to mm -hmm. this kid. You know, somebody who at a first- A blown there. Yeah, exactly. Somebody who he just sort of dismisses, you know, the snobby kid. He- become they become best friends and he is a snobby kid until they yeah. become friends yeah and how he learns and how he, you know he's a snobby kid he wants to be like you know spencer tracy in this movie and i think that's how he really changes he says i don't want to go back home i want to stay with you i want to do what you do and i want to mm -hmm. be just like you and how you know how this rich kid who just likes to use his money to push everybody around can learn to find happiness in that and it's unbelievably i feel like most movies this would be super sappy and i wouldn't yeah. like it and i'd find it like syrupy this isn't yeah. like that at all it does it very convincingly again like the good earth that could easily have been really sappy to oh totally but <laughs> that's what both both of these movies get that done so yeah. well they and even really... the life of emo zola yeah you have a man yeah. in prison for something he didn't do yeah. for years they could, so many movies this year, Dead End could have been sappy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little Chicago could have been sappy. Easily, yeah, Stage Door yeah. could have been really sappy. But they, yeah, they all do a good job. Yeah. Yeah, Stage Door could have been melodramatic. It's not. It's not. In 1938, we have The Adventures of Robin Hood, Alexander's Ragtime Band, Boys Town, The Citadel, Four Daughters, Grand Illusion, Jezebel, Pygmalion, Test Pilot, and The Winter You Can't Take It With You. Another fantastic list of movies. Yeah. All right. Objectively. Objectively. Grand Illusion. Yeah, Grand Illusion. I was going to yeah. that too. Um, and I might, I might go. Objectively, Robin Hood might be the runner-up. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking like that or Pygmalion. Yeah. It's with. Yeah. I would go between those two. Yeah. Um. And. Uh, Grand Illusion is obviously uh, considered um, one of the great French masterpieces by mm -hmm. the great Jean Renoir. Yeah, and it stars the great, the great <laughs> Jean, Jean Gabin. Gabin. <laughs> Don't we love him? And yes. this is the first time we saw him, actually, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. And I remember uh, Beast watched this. This was, 
this was like maybe it was one of the first. It was one of the first films we watched. The first foreign film we saw was the the rules of the game. The, yeah, the first actual foreign film we saw was like Metropolis. But the first yeah. like talking. Yeah, yeah. 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 When we, we had watched to subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> was yeah, I think it was. Yeah, it was rules of the game, and then it was this. I believe. Yeah, it was this. I, I don't. Or M. It was one of those. Yeah, which yeah. lets you know how long ago this was. <laughs> yeah, that was a long time ago. That was, yeah, high school. It was. But I think that th this one, I think what really stands out about this movie is it shows, like, while they are- The connection between these two men. Yeah, these two men, but also soldiers in general. Yeah, because, like, the how situation. Yeah, they're in how they're prisoners of war, but even, like- they're even able to find connections with their enemies yeah. in this, and how- And they could still have fun. Yeah. They're, they don't want to be there, but they could still have fun. And again, could have been sappy, and it's not. <laughs> no. There's one part that I always remembered where they don't know what a modern girl looks like. Yeah. Like, one of them has to say, they have short hair now, and they're like, what? I'm like, yeah, it's like sleeping with the boy, they say. <laughs> and, but they're like, I didn't know, because they've been in there for so long, they've been fighting for so long, they yeah. just don't think of- And they think a woman, but they don't know what they dress like anymore. Yeah. And it's- it's um, exciting, and it's also and it's heartbreaking, yeah. but it's also fun. The ending, too, don't you the love ending, that? Yeah, it reminds me of the Mortal Storm a lot. It does, yeah, how they cross the right, border. Right, by the border, yeah. it's snowing, just like mm -hmm, that. Just yeah. like that, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if the Mortal Storm got their ending for this. Would be, would yeah. be. Because it was that, clearly it was influential enough to be nominated for yeah. Best Picture, a foreign language film, yeah. First one to be. Yep. And you're not really gonna see it again. <laughs> too <laughs> no, bad. No, not for a while. Too, too bad, but yeah. Um, okay. Not till what, a more? Um, personally... I'm gonna go with Pygmalion. Me too. <clears throat> um, and I also do like You okay. Can't Take It With You a lot because I love the relationship I like Robin between Hood the two <laughs> older men. Yeah, I, do, I do like that one, obviously. I, I just love the Robin Hood story, story in general. But, it, it's a delightful story. I also love Jezebel. Um, that mm -hmm. movie, I, cr I cry watching that movie. <laughs> <laughs> cause I just cause Betty Davis at first you were like ah, she's a bitch then you yeah. feel so bad for her that's all of Betty Davis movies in I know show. <laughs> yeah how many of those do you cry to go into feeling bad for her yeah yeah but um I'm yeah I'm gonna go pick Million cause Me it's one of it is one of my favorites um it's completely delightful it's never been outdone and Leslie Howard will always be my Henry Higgins yeah it's funny absolutely. It, it ages very and they, and well. And they update it to the 30s, so that's yeah. fun to see. Yeah, and the acting is perfect. Absolutely. And it's... One of, and it was Wendy Hiller's first big hit that yeah. made her in a movie name. Uh -huh. And it's super charming, and it's, mm -hmm. it's fun, and you'll be laughing with it, and you'll yep. be thinking during it. It's mm -hmm. a, it is a great, great movie. And it's also the film credited with the new ending that was used. Yeah. My Fair Lady liked it so much they used it in My Fair Lady. The story of how they got it's funny too. It is. <laughs> how they called George Moore Chaw. They were like, well, if it did happen. Yeah, because he's ending. like, no, it would never happen. They're like, <laughs> okay, but if it did, how would it end? Use it? Yeah. <laughs> we're just curious because we're really studying for this. <laughs> so what did he expect? Was gonna happen? Yeah, then they used it. <laughs> then he like took out an article, like he dismissing did. it, but then nobody cared. <laughs> like, Obviously, it was nominated. <laughs> yeah, they're like George Bernard Shaw, we and it was used, so that's how much people liked it. They, they were, like, used it for my dear yeah. lady. <laughs> like George, we all love you, but uh. <laughs> yeah. and this ending better than yours. 1939, the big year in Hollywood. The nominees were Dark Victory, Gone with the Wind, Goodbye Mr. Chips, Love Affair, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Nanotchka of Mice and Men, Stagecoach, The Wizard of Oz, and Withering Heights. Mm. No, obviously this is the toughest year. Yeah. Even objectively, I mean, I guess it's yeah. Gone with the Wind, but what do you pick after that? <laughs> um, yeah, I know. Like, maybe The Wizard of Oz or Mr. Smith goes to Washington. I yeah. think it'd be one of them. It would, yeah. They're kind of neck and neck, though. I guess, obviously, for influence, Wizard of Oz. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but I guess for, and especially when you consider the time to objectively Gone with the Wind, because it's really set um, a standard for filmmaking. Epics and just, yeah, filmmaking and how to do epics. And, um, to... and the cinematography is some of the best ever done in oh, film history. Oh, yeah, gorgeous. Um, and... <laughs> like maybe my favorite part of the movie is. I, I think mine too. Yeah. Um, the way they f filmed Vivian Lee is stunning. Mm -hmm. She's never looked better, which is saying With something. With those cat eyes of hers, yeah. I know. Like how yeah, isn't Scott? I didn't read the book, but isn't she described as like having yeah, like, those yeah. cat eyes? Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and um, perfect casting again. 
Um, even though it took a while to cast it. Um, <laughs> but, it was worth it if we got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and color really becomes her. Oh, um, yeah. She should have been, like, a Technicolor queen. I know. Yeah, one of those. Yeah. But she, um, yeah, she didn't make a lot of color movies. No. Um, and everybody else is wonderful. I mean, even though Vivian Lee is the star of this movie in more ways than one. Rightfully so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because she's a great Vivian Lee. Yeah. And now we say Hattie McDaniel steals every season. Yeah, she's absolutely. In. Um, and everybody else, yeah. Obviously, Lizzie Howard, he didn't want to be in here, poor thing. Yeah, that's um, pretty obvious. <laughs> but like, I don't know oh, why you would even cast him in that, because he's, he's, like, He Brit- was a name. Yeah, I, like, I know, but yeah. He was, like, British and he didn't want to be there. And- yeah. He did it so he can make intermezzo. That's at least, at least that. something good came out of yeah, it. Yeah, we got intermezzo. But he, but he didn't even. We get... got inner bourbon from it too. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> he didn't even give a good performance because he didn't care and he let everyone know he didn't care. <laughs> so it's kind of funny seeing it for that reason. There's a lot of interesting tidbits behind this movie too that make it even more fun to watch. Like that. I mean, Clark Gable is everything we ever wanted in Rhett Butler. Yeah. Um, and David Oselznick said, we buried the man who should have played Rhett Butler, John Gilber, which would have been, I think, this is a lot like how John Gilbert would have played it, too. Yeah. Um, I think, because um, I think Clark has that, like, likable quality to him. I think John Gilbert could have really made him, um, like, more of the... Complex, more, yeah, not just like, the perfection man. <laughs> like, how he's, I think he's supposed to be played, because I think he is supposed to yeah. be flawed and, like, a little in off-putting, but with Clark, you're like, ooh, big yeah, human. man exactly. But I think, because I think, John Gilbert's shown, like, in Downstairs, John Gilbert can liked do playing that. characters yeah. like that. I he, think, he didn't like playing bland leading men. Yeah, and also, stars. and also, like, by the time he would have done this, he would have been a bit older, so yeah. you can no, you can tell why Scarlet wouldn't be into him. Like when you see yeah. Clark Gable, you're like, well, who doesn't want to the be girl's with him? She's blind. <laughs> she's blind. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's um, it's a completely stunning film, and even the little details of the little period details, um, in the house, like just yeah. everything, the decorating, everything really yeah, works definitely. on it. I mean, works well with it. The people who work behind the scenes did an amazing job, and some of the most quotable lines ever. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Um, and we, we've mentioned we find it overrated, this yeah. movie overrated, but yet we always we come always back to watch, watch it. But we still watch a lot. Yeah. Like, for a four-hour movie, too, how many four-hour movies can you watch that many Yeah, times? exactly. How, like, how it'll just be that day where you were like, wanna put in Gone with the Wind? Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It is. It's fun. <laughs> and, like, I notice its flaws, but it is yeah. the good well outweighs. So, Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, and so now, personally... <laughs> we kind of quiet for a long time. <laughs> okay, um, so I love Love Affair, I love Nunachka, I love yeah. Withering Heights, I love Stagecoach. Oh my. I love A Mice and Men. Oh yeah. A yeah. Mice and Men is great. And Mr. I love Smith, and, too. And, yeah. Uh, I love all these Can movies. Can we just not pick in this year? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's too hard to pick. Because I... Uh, I can't. Because how do you pick between Wuthering Heights and Stagecoach and Other Mice and Men and Notchka? How do you? I can't. I, I can't. I just can't. Because sometimes I'll try to limit it to two, but I can't even do that this year. I can't, I can't even <laughs> pick two. No. Because then I'm like, oh, I'll pick this one. No, I need this one. No, yeah. I need this one. No, can you pick one. your favorite two? Because I no. can't. You're better than I am if you can't. <laughs> no. Um, maybe... If I like had to, if I had to, like someone was twisting my arm, I might I'm say, twisting your arm. <laughs> um, I probably say Nanachka. All right, my wow, favorite. wow, that's good of you. I lo- that's and my- don't think about it too much. But I'm gonna go. <laughs> yeah, that is my favorite Carbo movie. Okay, twisting my arm. And then my runner up would probably be Withering Heights. <sighs> All right, twisting my arm. Uh, I've seen. I think. I've seen Ninochka in Stagecoast the most. Yeah. Those are, mm. Ugh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and also, maybe it's easier for me to pick Ninochka because when I think Stagecoach, I'm like, John Wayne, I really like The Searchers, but with Ninochka, that's as good as Garbo gets. That's true, because I was thinking that just now. I was like, Stagecoach, but The Searchers, <laughs> oh, but The Searchers. And yeah, you're right, Ninochka is as good as, like, anyone in that movie gets. Yeah. Garbo, Melvin Douglas, they're, it's everybody, yeah. it's their, like, all their best movie. And they came it's even close, some, yeah, yeah, it's probably in the top, like, three, five movies Lubert did, and yeah. that's saying something. Yeah, it is. But, um... Uh, maybe. <laughs> I might have to go with that, although 
I'm like, say, man, it's seeming really tempting right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, that was also everybody's best, too. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. And another Lewis milestone, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> Hal Roach Studios did it. I know, isn't that amazing? <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> and Wuthering Heights is so pretty. <laughs> Cry every time I watch yeah. it. Yeah. Mmm. I guess I'll agree with you. Just for now. Tomorrow, I'll pick. <laughs> Tomorrow, I'll pick up my some memoir stagecoach. But right now, I'm tired. We're going to 1940, another difficult year. Goody. <laughs> we have all this in Heaven 2, Foreign Correspondent, The Grapes of Wrath, The Great Dictator, Kitty Foyle, The Letter, The Long Voyage Home, Our Town, The Philadelphia Story, and Rebecca. Objectively. I'm gonna go... Um, I'm gonna go with The Grapes of Wrath. Me too. Um, and I know a lot. this movie depressed a lot of people. It's actually one of my favorite movies. Oh, yeah. One yeah. of your favorites, huh? That's impressive. Um, yeah, it's definitely up there. I, I... Yeah, people say it's depressing, but I go back to rewatch I, it. I, <laughs> it's depressing, but no, it's, but, you know, so it's Withering Heights, but I watch that a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and I love the character of Tom Joad. Mm -hmm. And I think, just like with, um, David Copperfield, it it um cuts the fat of the it book. It does. And I'm kind of glad it doesn't have that ending, because that's such, such a weird yeah, ending. Yeah, I'm not, no, the book, no like, way they would have put that ending in They didn't story, have yeah. the chapter with the turtle crossing the road? Oh, that's every, that's everyone's favorite part. <laughs> no, but, like, aside, obviously they weren't, they weren't gonna have those little in-between chapters, except for the one that they made yeah. about, yeah. The one they add to the movie. Mm -hmm. But, um, the... The one, uh, f one of the things where I feel the book really dragged was the middle, and they really shortened yeah. that part up. This, this movie doesn't drag at all. They at also, all. um, switched the, um, order around in yeah. the way that works on, on it film. It does, it does. I could see the way it is in book form, why yeah. it is that way in literature And they did that in Old Pine Western Front, too, because yeah. it's not a linear story in the book, but yeah. in the movie it is. And again, in the book you understand why yeah. it's like that, but translating it to film, you it, have it to really shows it, the yeah. devastation when it goes linear. And that's what it's like in Grape Shaft, too. You see the devastation yeah. in a linear story. Because you see these characters lose their hope. Yeah. Um, because yeah. in the in the book they go to the they go to the good who reveal before they go yeah, to they the, do. the dump one. But in the movie, it's in the so movie. much more rewarding. Yeah, you feel like one. oh, they went through all that yeah. trouble at finally going to this one. one, and that's why it shows Tom Joad's sacrifice as being yeah. really important that he's willing that in the, the family sacrifice that they're mm -hmm. willing to leave for Tom this place that they really liked that they yeah. could have been happy at. And it really and, does a good job developing yeah. his relationship with Casey and a yeah. really spiritual connection and they with have. his mother. Yeah, and yeah, and his mother. Yeah. Um, personally, I'm obviously gonna go with Rebecca. <laughs> yeah, I knew you'd go with that. Um, yeah, it's one of my favorite movies. And While the Grapes of Wrath, like, that one, um, took liberties with the book, and understandably, Rebecca follows the book so closely. It's also one of my favorite books. Um, and it's just everything you would ever want from reading that book. It's perf It's so true to the book. And the book is great, so there's really nothing you I would really change about the book, so yeah. And it's just how you would picture it being played out. It made me love the movie more reading the book, which is why now it's one of my favorite movies, because I appreciate it on a whole new level. I saw whole new depths to these characters that I, because I, the first time I saw us, I was kind of just getting into movies, so I don't think I got a lot of the little moments with these characters and reading the book as, when I was older, I was like, oh. I mean, I was still in high school, but it really, like, it really made me have an epiphany with this movie of just how truly wonderful it is to mm -hmm. these characters. Yeah. See, personally, I went with the two Hitchcocks. I have a difficult time picking between them. So like, <laughs> well, that's uh, one of my favorite Hitchcocks, too. Former yeah. Correspondent. Former Correspondent Rebecca. I would have a difficult time picking between the two of them. I'm going with The Great Dictator. That's also yeah. one of my favorites. Yeah. I, 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 my favorite Chapel movie is Modern Times, mm -hmm. but um, I this one I really like. This one's probably my favorite, actually. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah, I know. Out it's really hard Charlie, picking, yeah. but... It is. And obviously there's some shorts I really like, too. Yeah. I, I like Modern Times for the um, innovative. Yeah, I like that too. I love. Um, yeah, and I I know it's uh, uh now Lawler La Berte, another movie I really yeah. like. But yeah, uh, I but I I like the little um technological advantages it uses. And there's like a lot of funny, cute little moments in that movie too. In Modern Times. Yeah. Yeah. 
And yeah, so the, and same with the great teacher. There's yeah. some moments that just really touch you. But I think that I really like that this was like his first official yeah. talkie because in how he's playing a dual role and how language plays such an important part and how he doubles. He yeah, he has double speak as I like him with character. Paul Goddard too. Yeah, his wife as a couple. Time. Yeah, yeah. they they are a charming couple. Yeah. And he really used her well, because yeah. this was before- They, they he, both are good at acting opposite pretty yeah. much anybody, but- And yeah. this was before people really knew her worth. I mean, when yeah. she made Warner Times, and even with this, they were still, like, not too sure about her, it Yeah, seems, it definitely but, helped, because yeah. at least- it, It's kind of funny, because in the late 30s and some of the early 40s, you'll see her in, like, more supporting roles, and you're like, why is she in supporting yeah. roles? She should, she should be pushed mm-hmm. to the front, but- that wasn't totally the case but um with this i feel like he also gives his supporting cast a really good support and it's cast a, a really lot of time good, to shine. yeah he only doesn't have a lot of a lot of recognizable faces it's and because this he, he really does yeah it's because he usually focuses more on vignettes yeah. than the actual story but the story here because the story is supposed to just be simpler and then the vignettes this, this one just is, move it along this one is yeah kind of a story of vignettes yeah it's um the story plays such an important part, and there mm-hmm. are these little vignettes, but it is definitely has a, a much more integrated story than we're used to from yeah. Chaplin. But it had to be because this is like a, a s- serious, serious satire. Yeah, at, at the time when most people were afraid to do satire. I mean, like be like this. if to be or not to be, like didn't really, you know, go to a serious part of it when you have to. Yeah. Exactly. It would just seem. It would, then it would just seem stupid. Yeah. And we had we had tons of low budget comedies out like that. You know that didn't take themselves seriously, yeah. and so they were kind of seen as just low brow and stupid. But that's but this movie goes the extra mile and takes the serious moments seriously because this is something you can't mess around with. And Chaplin said that if he knew. Cause it's a lot it, like a Frank Tashlin cartoon on screen. Yeah. Like when they're on the plane, it reminds me of a yeah cartoon. definitely. When um, Chaplin said if he knew that the Holocaust happened, he wouldn't have made this, because mm-hmm. he feels like then it's nothing you can even make fun of. But, granted, we still get people making fun of it today, like Mel Brooks and things yeah. like that. So, but I can understand at the time how, like, looking back and yeah. then knowing that stuff is going on at this yeah. time, well, also, I can understand um, him being uncomfortable Not being personally it. affected by it while Mel Brooks is actually Jewish, That's so he true. does have a personal connection to the Holocaust, it seems, like Chaplin did. Yeah. So I could see why he but would think But none of that. those movies would exist if it wasn't Exactly. Yeah. Blossoms in the Dust for 1941. I didn't mention that. <laughs> so just he... Blossoms in the Dust, Yes. People. <laughs> Carson and Pigeon, first time ever. <laughs> Citizen Kane. Here comes Mr. Before Jordan. I wonder what objective is. <laughs> <I'm wrong. laughs> Here comes Mr. Jordan. Hold Back the Dawn. How Green Was My Valley, which won. The Little Foxes. The Maltese Falcon. One Foot in Heaven. Sergeant York and Suspicion. Oh my god. Those are all great, great movies. <laughs> And obviously, we have to objectively say Citizen Kane, but these are yeah, all fantastic movies. Yeah, it would be Citizen Kane or the, and the Maltese Falcon would be the runner-up, yeah. objectively. But, objectively. Um, uh, so, I, I do want to mention with Citizen Kane, um, so, Bianca and I, a lot, will be, um, when people know we like old movies, and they'll always say, what do you think of Citizen Kane? Because I think that movie is crap. And I'm like, I saw it when I was 14, and I, I was Yeah, like, I was fine. Before yeah. I saw, like, well, any are, other movie. I know, when people are like, it's so boring. I'm like, if I could watch it when I was 14, yeah, I have fine. no problems with it. It's even more interesting, honestly, when you know about Hearst. But. Yeah. But I, w- when I first saw it, we saw, like, pre- we only saw, like, Hitchcock at that time. Yeah, yeah. When we watched this, we were fine with it. We had no yeah. problems. Mm-hmm. And I, I swear, people just find things to yeah, about I know. with this movie, and things that make no sense, like... It, no, it, they don't. Do we want to say what our aunt said about it? Go ahead. All right, well, we asked, because we were having a conversation about movies, and we were talking about movies that we think are too long, and she's like, well, I think Citizen Kane's too it's long. It's not we're long. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what? Like, out of all the movies, you can say that one's too long? Like, I'd say it'd be it. The length is fine, and the way it ends is fine, and the way, yeah. I mean, now I sat through Das Boot in one sitting, but, <laughs> so maybe I'm not one to judge on length here, but. <laughs> but, you know, you know when a movie overstays its welcome. Yeah. This isn't one of them. Yeah, we saw the four-hour version of Greed, so, yeah, maybe well, we should, yeah. <laughs> although that did outstay its welcome. That did, but I mean, like. That's we, why they cut it. But, I mean, that, you, we can tell when a movie outstays its welcome, and this one doesn't. No! 
it the yeah. It's not like I have a per- like because I first saw it before I knew who all, any of these people were. So yeah. it's not like I have a personal connection to it where I'm not like defending. Because I'm like, oh, well, Joseph Kind's in it, so I must defend it. Yeah, exactly. Like again, first saw this movie. I was 14, and I didn't know anything, really. I didn't know who Orson Welles was. That's nope. how long ago it was. No, I, I, yeah. I didn't don't see Joseph Kahn in anything. No. I don't know who any of these people no. were. I've flown to him. Pr- I probably heard of Orson Welles, but I probably couldn't tell you, like, any other movie he mm-hmm. did. Oh, I definitely couldn't tell you any other movie he did. I didn't even know, like, like watching him like that. I didn't know that guy was the director. <laughs> I didn't know he wrote it. <laughs> it's... Um, so, I, I just know. sat down and watched it blind. Yeah. I, I often say, I think this is the movie for movie lovers. It because is. I think everyone, everyone who, I just feel like people will try to find something wrong with it just to be edgy and be cool. Yeah. Like, aren't I cool? I don't like Susan well, I mean, Kane. Yeah, because we said, um, we said Gone with the Wind was flop, but we're not like, well, let's name everything wrong with it, because there's nothing good about Gone with the yeah, Wind. Yeah, well, like, yeah, again, we think it's overrated, but I will admit, objectively, it yeah. is the movie that deserved to win Best Picture. And I will watch it and I per- so many times. Yeah, I will keep watching it. Me too, it. and I personally prefer the other movies nominated that year, and I like uh, personally, I like a lot of the films this year, uh, but I don't think it's fair to say, oh, well, aren't I cool? I don't like Susan Kane. Come at me. Although I also don't like how people will be like, well, how, how did, how grew my, was my value win? Those people can suck I it. know. How Grew My Value was one of the greatest films of all time. So, uh, it's uh, like right after Susan Kane. Yeah. It's not really like it's so, like Susan no. Kane so far about How Grew My Value. It is very close. And I, and I say to people, honestly, you think a little, like, RKO, like, well, that was yeah. meant to be just this little RKO movie. It wasn't even one of their ambitious projects. No. Do you think they would have given that this picture? But that aside... It's the film schools that made it what it is. Yeah, to- definitely. It's, like, film theory that yeah. made it what it is. But I think it, I think it works as a movie on its own when you watch it casually. But, yeah. And people who think otherwise, I don't get it. I but, think um, everyone can be affected by Harry's My Valley. People that complain yeah. about it obviously never saw it. And honestly, I've seen, when I watch, I've read blogs of people talking about, like, what movies they don't think deserve to win Best Picture. And obviously, some on the list are like, well, yep, yep, okay. But when every time I get to How Grows My Valley, I cringe. And I, Kane didn't win. I stopped reading those blogs altogether. Yeah. I'm like, these people don't know what. Cause lost li- my credi- you lost yeah. your credibility. Because I read blog posts of people who said, I can't say what this movie's about. I'm like, wait, you didn't even watch it? I know. You just are saying, just because you know. Just because you know what Citizen Kane is. Yeah. Oh, and yeah, objectively speaking, sure, Citizen Kane's the better movie, but How Green Was My Valley is, it's a favorite of mine. Mine too, mine too. I, I, I absolutely love it, and I even, when I wrote my Best Picture perspective, I, respective, I said, if you're looking for somebody to bitch about this winning, you're not gonna find nope, it here, not because here. I love this movie to yeah, don't, death. Don't come with me to complain about how I my valley. And the funny thing is, actual, like, critics, like, not jerks writing yeah. blog posts that don't do research before <laughs> and actually watch the movies, yeah. um, Critics, when they talk about how rare is my valley, they gush about yeah. it. It's, it's funny. Well, try to say something wrong with it. I can't. Yeah, you can't. I, I, I love it. I love the script. I, I love the acting. I love the way it's filmed. But I love it. I, like, I can watch it so many times, and it's depressing. Yeah, I want to watch it forever. Yeah. You know? it has this, but it has happy moments too. Yeah, because it earn, it earns everything in the movie. Yeah, it, but it's about coal mining. I mean, it's it's a depressing life. Yeah, but interesting one to watch. Mm-hmm. You know? All right. So, all right. Personally, which one do you like the best? I'm between. Here comes Mr. Jordan mm-hmm. and the Little Foxes, two favorites of mine. I want to go with Here Comes Mr. Jordan. That's one of the all-time great comedies. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're not going to find... A... Also, we've seen this movie <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. how many times. times. You're yeah. not going to find a fantasy comedy better than this. I agree. I think it's the best of the fantasy comedies. Yeah. And we love Robert Montgomery like any old movie fan. Yeah. <laughs> and, his, and he's had his Robert Montgomery I know, yeah. so therefore, so much to like. <laughs> and the wonderful Claude Rains. Yes. I mean, how could you just like a movie with Robert Montgomery and Claude Rains? Like any, I love the way Claude Rains says his lines in this. I know. Like how it's just so nonchalant. Like, yeah, it's everyday type of thing. And it's actually one of the few movies that had an actual good remake, so that's a good thing to know. <laughs> so true. therefore, it doesn't really, it doesn't sully the film's image at yeah. all. 
I do think this is definitely, well, obviously this better. is definitely the better one, but yeah, I do like the other one is enjoyable because James Mason's in it. So. Yes. Yes, I I'm glad they got, yeah. they wanted Cary Grant and then they got James Mason. I'm like, oh, well, James Mason is I think James, James Mason more is yeah suited for that part. Suited for the part because he's close to Claude Range, you know. Yeah, and that's a compliment. It is. Um, it is. <laughs> um, yeah. So this one just really makes me happy, and I <laughs> I've seen it how many times I can see it, how many more. Yeah. For me personally. I do, here comes Mr. Jordan might be it too. But I also I do love little foxes. I know. I love Sergeant York. Oh, who doesn't? Yeah. <laughs> That's one that I just enjoy watching. It makes me, you know, feel yeah, good I watch know. it. And I love how grows my valley. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. But I I I guess maybe here comes Mr. Jordan, just because I've I've seen it so many times yeah. and I can always go back to watch I it. I get so happy watching it too. Yeah. Like, I feel like a million dollars happy watching me it. Me too. You'll you'll notice that we're picking ones that we just but that you just can't help but go back to because, like, it is hard to say which one you personally like best, but it's hard to not pick deny the one. a film. Yeah, that, yeah, not pick the one you just can't help but always go back to, and this is definitely one of those. And so long, champ. I love that ending. Me it's too. one of my favorite movie endings. And I do want to watch How Green Was My Valley and Little Foxes and Sergeant Work <laughs> Forever too. Yes. I do. Yeah, me too. Yeah, but uh, like, um. Here Comes Mr. Jordan is one that every year we're so well happy. And Hold Back the Dawn, that's a great one. Yeah, they're all good, B. <laughs> that one needs to be on DVD. Yeah, really. It just it, There should be a rule if it was nominated for Best Picture, <laughs> it just should automatically or be Or anything. Arise it, My Love. It won. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Paramount, you gotta step on your game. Universal Vault. Yeah, I know. Else, so yeah. Well, obviously they're busy releasing their own films, their own I understand. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 1942, there's 49th Parallel, King's Row, The Magnificent Ambersons, Mrs. Miniver, which won, The Pied Piper, The Proud of the Yankees, Random Harvest, The Talk of the Town, Wake Island, and Yankee Doodle Dandy. All right. Objectively. Objectively. Um, Yankee Doodle Dandy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, that one, and again, that makes you feel good. You're like, yes, America! Yeah. <laughs> <We're watching laughs> <it."> <laughs> I think, like, many of these are very close together. Yeah, they like, are, they, they are. Like, they are all, like, quality-wise pretty pretty close, and, you know, so it's not like you can easily pick which one would be no, after yeah. you know, Danny, <laughs> but I think, yeah, probably objectively, just because it manages to be a biopic and a musical, and yep. it just succeeds at all these things. I think it does... It's. Um, as charming as the day is yeah. long. Yeah. I think it's what um, Great Ziegfeld should have been closer to. Mm -hmm. Not that Great Ziegfeld is a bad movie by any The production means. numbers are what made it. Great Ziegfeld? Yeah. Yeah, well, like, I, and I, when I wrote about Great, Great Ziegfeld, I said, to me, it just feels like we'll have long stretches of biopic and then long stretches yeah. of musical numbers when there's no even flow. And I'm this, a Ziegfeld nut, so I don't mind it as much. No, but you yeah. don't. But, yeah, for me, like, just watching it as a film, that bothered me. But, yeah. yeah. Not not that the biopic scenes where the production numbers were bad. It's just I'm like, well, where's the even? Where why yeah, yeah. is this so uneven? It, it it bugged me, and that's not what this movie's like at all. It's also this movie's also better written, I think, because it has more, yeah, yeah it has more charm yeah, to clearly. it. And uh, I'm not denying that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. The, the, this one, not that. And obviously, Great Seafield has like good funny moments in it too. But this yeah, one, like his relationship with Frank Morgan in that movie. Yeah, that, that was delightful. Yeah. But, um, like, the actual, like, s written dialogue yeah. here is fun, and there's also serious a, moments. It's a nice movie to watch. Yeah. It's nice. And there's just, you know, many scenes that you like to, that, you know, you like to go back to. Go back to, and watch, yeah. yeah. And it's like, always, when he's pretending to be the old man. I, just, yeah, I was like, it's, it's funny. <laughs> and then, like, the hair. Got it! Like, he's stomping on it. Yeah. <laughs> Moments like that. Like, he's having a field day, and it makes yeah. me even more happy watching it. Yeah, because this is the type of movie you wanted to make. And it's yeah. a lot of fun seeing him dance, too. When he dances yes. just like George M. Cohen. And it also, it earns its little serious moments. It does. It, it, it moves smoothly it, between it, comedy it, and drama. That's really and hard for musical. <laughs> that's really yeah. hard for a biopic to do. Yeah. Especially one with musical numbers yeah. in it. But yeah, and because of George and Cohen, all the numbers are enjoyable. Like, you know, yeah. 
like, I was born in Virginia. Yeah, yeah. that gets stuck in my I head. Know, after. I <laughs> love that one. Yeah, it's so catchy. And it's fun seeing him and his sister dance here, too. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we also have an amazing, another amazing biopic this year, The Pride of the Yankees, which does yes. a good job on balancing it, too. That, that That's a really good movie. And I, that's one that could have easily been soapy, hence the baby yeah. story is like the, <laughs> that. That is, like, everything... That that movie and Yankee Doodle Danny could have been too. Like when his father dies, that yeah. could have been a really sticky scene. But no, it's not. It's very, it's very authentic. <laughs> yeah. When it's acted by Walter Houston and James Canyon, <laughs> we don't have to worry <laughs> about that. Two of the finest actors yeah. of the time. And I think that, um, but yeah, like Pride of the Yankees could have easily been that. But it's the actors never ever let no. it get into and sticky that has territory. A great cast. Yes, yeah, Pride of the Yankees. Yes, mm. that's who I would want to play all those characters. Yeah, and Babe Ruth playing himself, and he I know. Like, <laughs> and he's not playing himself like the way Babe Ruth story plays on where they just beef him up the yeah. whole time and you're like, oh my gosh, Babe Ruth would have hated this. He, he's, he has fun with it. Yeah, it's a lot he, of, he plays him like egotistical. I know, it's, it's funny, fun. it's, it's funny, funny seeing it. Yeah. You're like, oh, this, this is like Babe Ruth making fun of himself, but also like, because it shows like how he probably wasn't totally like this, yeah. but he also, because he could poke fun of himself. Yeah. But, I yeah. love people that could do self-parody like that, that can really... Put yeah, he really on the rams like him into the ground. In this. I really, I mean, that's great. Too. That's someone I just love seeing people do that. Yeah, even someone who is a legend like Babe Ruth can yeah. even <laughs> that even he can have. I know because even it. if he did, if he personally built himself up, not the Babe Ruth store, but him personally, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like, well, he is in this. Yeah, yeah. he's trying to. He, I mean, yeah, <laughs> they got him to be in this movie. He might as well. Yeah, yeah. So that just shows you when I have liked the Babe Ruth story. <laughs> no. personally. I mean, and if it weren't for Random Harvest, this would be a very hard year for me to choose. But luckily, my one of my top five favorite movies <laughs> is here, Random Harvest. Um, and um, it's just one of the great romances ever. Ever! Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I'm not... I'm normally, like, with romances like that, I'm normally not as willing with them. I mean, sometimes it takes me a bit to get going with movies like that, but with this one... It has two of my favorite people together, so that works. Um, mm -hmm. And it really is tender, poignant, yeah. and pulls all the punches. Um, and you could tell the actors love this movie. It was both both their, both of them said it was one of their favorites. Yeah, I think Rogarson said this was her favorite ever. Um, and I know it was one of, one of Ronald Coleman's favorites. He named his house after the movie, so um, that really says a lot. And they have great chemistry. Yeah. Um. And and there's just so many idyllic moments. Even though it could be sappy, it's not in the least. It's not because you have an excellent production and actors that really know what they're doing with romance. They're experts at this genre. Yeah. Uh, I'm I could gush it. about this all day. <laughs> uh, I might pick Yankee Doodle Dandy personally. Yeah. I, I well, that's one I per, I have a personal fondness yeah, for like, too. Because I'm looking at it, I'm like, I like. Well, like so many of these, but I guess this is a, that was maybe a, just because again I've seen this one so many times. Yeah, but yeah. that was the first one I saw with James Cagney all the way through. Oh yeah, that's how long ago it was. Yeah, uh, I guess it was. Yeah, yeah. That's I guess weird. it would be for both of us. Yeah, it, yeah. that's it's not weird. Yeah, <laughs> good one to start with though. Yeah. Because we watched it after we saw a clip of him and Angel's dirty faces, and we're like, we should we should start watching. <laughs> yeah. Him. yeah, he's funny. Yeah. Because we saw the, a funny part from that. Yeah. And then we watched, that was like the next one we watched. Yeah. yeah. 1943. There's Casablanca, objectively. which won. Objectively. And honestly, yeah. we're going to objectively say that. Yeah. Because we don't want to be pitchforked. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we, wouldn't, be we wouldn't deny it. We no, wouldn't deny no. it. <laughs> um, For Whom the Bell Tolls, Heaven Can Wait, The Human Comedy, in which we serve Madame Curie, The More the Merrier, The Oxbow Incident, The Song of Bernadette, and Watch on the Rhine. And again, amazing movies. Amazing. Yeah, really. <laughs> so if it weren't for Casablanca, this would be a pretty difficult year to decide for, like, um, objectively. Yeah, best. there's not a weak one in the bunch. They're really, all, no. Yeah. And these are all... Heavy hitters. Great. Yeah. All definitely worth your time. And a great, um, um, arrangement. I mean, yeah. great range, I mean. Yeah. Not just dramatic. Yeah, most are war movies, but in the, yeah, they're really, really. Well, good. I do like I do like war movies. I do like war movies. <laughs> I do yeah. like my war movies. 
Okay, so Casablanca. <laughs> just I remember in my first writing class, people said to me, "You and your war stories," because I used to, <laughs> like to write war stories. I wonder why, because I watched so many of them. People used to say, "Can't you write a story that takes place today?" Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> you don't like it. Get the fuck out. <laughs> All right. A lot of authors write movie stories that take place not today. <laughs> A lot of the movies nominated this year didn't take place today. <laughs> Even Lady Bird, 2002. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> okay, so Casablanca. Now, what can we say about Casablanca? No one else has. No, I'm sure nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, again, um, how can Casablanca? What can we say about it? No one else has said it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure someone has said that and that oh, doesn't yeah. know what you're talking and about. And they deserve to be pitchforked. You should go attack them because <laughs> they. Have no, Don't. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just pity them for their stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> just say you clearly have mental problems, and I feel bad for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but again, an amazing cast. You can't beat that cast. No. I like how all the characters in this are complex. Yes. I really like that. They're all three-dimensional. Even the ones in the background, they have these little moments where they aren't what they seem. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Just the characters who are just, like, you know, they're at Rick's. Yeah. They all have, who are stuck there. They all have these, like, little character moments. And I, I really like um, Victor Laszlo's character because I think yes. that he could have easily just been the the bland other guy. Yeah. And he's not like that at all. Not when Paul Henry plays no. him. <laughs> he is like, you know, he's basically Jesus. In this. Yeah. yeah, he's like a Messiah figure. Like they he is. Actually, everybody, he's everyone loves perfect, him. Yeah, even like there. There's, like, a line in it where someone even says to Humphrey Booker, well, her husband's way better than you. Yeah. Like, because personally, you know. You, he is. He, he's, like, personally the greatest guy in the world. And Which I, is why, um, obviously you don't want to see him step on him. Yeah. Because you like him. But I, and you feel like, like Rick, but you like him too. Yeah, you, but it, I think it succeeds so well because even though Laszlo is such a great person and you like him. Yeah. You like, you do side with Rick. Yeah, you yeah. want her to be with him. Though. Yeah. But also, at well, who wants to be with someone who's perfect? Yeah, exactly. Someone who everybody talks of. Yeah. Who you know? But you'd always feel like you're yeah, not worthy of him. Yeah, yeah. He's not like shield to the point where you're like, well, he's not really like that. No, yeah. he, he's a great person. Yeah, yeah. and um, a hero. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that uh, and. You know, Claude Rain steals every scene he's in in this movie. Because he's Claude Rain. Yeah, it's what he does. That's it, his yeah. natural state. <laughs> he just walks away with everything. <laughs> and um, and one of our favorite character actors, slash silent leading man, Kyle Vaya. Yes. Love him. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. This is, um, I guess, the role everybody knows him for. Um, It's kind of funny that he, a lot this of the role... This is the man who laughs. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that a lot of people know him for playing a Nazi when he was one of the biggest Nazi objectors. Why did he get to make movies in America? They were going to kill him. Yeah, every Hollywood Nazi... Not- like every movie with a Hollywood Nazi, they're played by somebody who escaped from Nazi. Helmut Danton was actually in a concentration. Who's camp. in this? <laughs> yep, he, yeah, I know. He doesn't play a Nazi though, so that's nice. No, that's nice. He's someone stuck in Casablanca. Um, but it's just the type of movie that, um, you know, it's the type. I think that it could have been just you know your typical good movie, mm-hmm. but it's so much more than that because they pay so much. They the little things mm-hmm. add up, and they pay so much attention to all these things that just could have been brushed aside. Like Blasio could have just been this yeah. nice other guy, and I'm so glad you know they yeah. actually gave him a character. Because honestly, in a lot of movies, when the and other... the villains could have just been one dimensional cut out mm-hmm. villains because they're Nazis. You don't have to really give them characteristics. We'll hate them, you know. Well, doesn't it bother you like an? move like love triangle type of plots where like the other guy is just bland yeah like, no, I, I, either he's the bland good guy or the bland i'm normally guy. really i'm normally really bored during love triangle plots mm-hmm, because me too. of that that's why i was bored during titanic uh, well <laughs> the, the the love plot of it um because yeah when will this damn ship sink yeah i'm like can this ship sink in a night to remember the whole movie's a ship yeah. sinking come on <laughs> But I mean, like, you know, they're both bland, and yeah. the one is bland good, and the other is bland bad. I'm like, yeah. oh my god, like, this is like the, you know... Yeah, they need to be real characters, and they yeah. are here. Like, I, you know, I've seen this movie in an early talkie. Yeah. I don't need to see it in a big million dollar At least that one had, at least that one had moments I liked better, you know? Yeah. But this, um... But this movie doesn't do any of that. Like, the Mm-mm. villains have, like, all these extra layers, Cloud Rains especially. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Round up the usual suspects. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And the script is it's like they the script knew they, is priceless. It's like they knew they're writing something special. Yeah, the script is priceless. It is. That's what's you can ask it. for a better script than uh, anything yeah. else. Yeah. What script what script is more quotable? Well, like so many like classic lines sort of make you laugh now because they're so iconic. This yeah. one isn't really like that. It's like, you know, the lines are still cool and they're yeah, still awesome. of course, yeah. We'll get to the shorter list of movies. Nineteen forty four, we have Double and Denemy, Gaslight, Going My Way, Which One, Since You Went Away in Wilson. And again, good movies. Yeah. Um so objectively. Double, double and Denemy. Yeah. <laughs> um and such a smart script. Biting, absolutely yeah. biting. Like this like the the Maltese Falcon really pushed forward film noir, but this movie I feel like um the couple noir. Yeah. The, um, Which is what we often associate with noir. The sexy noir. Yeah. Which, you know, and I think Maltese Falcon gave us the mystery. Yeah. And this gave us the um, sort of character, you know, femme fatale and the, um, and the male character playing off mm -hmm. each other. And you get the, and so the, these, you put that together and you get noir. It you really, get it, essential noir. It really influenced noir because you look at Latin Lake and after this they made the Blue Dahlia, which yeah. is their sexiest film together. I do want to say, if Laura was nominated this year, the other big <laughs> noir course. this year, I would have picked it both objectively and personally. Me too. We can't get enough of Data Andrews, people. <laughs> no, give us all the Gene Journeys. <laughs> yeah, with Except them for some of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> with them together. With them together, yeah, it's all good. They were meant to be like Glenn Ford and Rita Hayworth. Yep. Speaking of sexy noir, now personally. <laughs> Double in Yeah, me too. <laughs> I like that one. I, I like movies with dialogue like that too. I just like to sit back and yeah. listen. And both the actors like just sizzle off each yeah. other. And the yeah, exactly like you said, the dialogue is By amazing. Attention. Yeah, and it's it's fun to watch and just want to go back and watch again. Yeah, and it inspired so many movies. Yeah. And without this, we wouldn't have one of my favorites of Post Noir's Rings twice. It really mm -hmm. set aside like films that were. Co Film noirs could be like, okay, let's not take their production code so seriously. Yeah, we can push the envelope. It's yeah. okay. And the production code tended to be okay with that because they just didn't let children see them. Yeah, and but the these it's because these movies didn't portray these things as good no. because they usually ended up really bad for them. So like that in was Double fine. Indemnity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it they didn't care so much mm -hmm. about that that this was a great A movie with great A stars. Yeah. But it everything they were doing was wrong, so it's okay. <laughs> so yeah, it's if you, they don't get away with it. Yeah, didn't get the girl, and I didn't get the money. <laughs> so if you feel aroused watching this, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it no. was. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's okay if you feel aroused watching it, <laughs> but letting people get away with crime now—that's where we draw the line. That is where. <laughs> yeah, and the cast, all three leads are really mm -hmm. good. It's a good movie. 1945, Anchors Away, The Bells of St. Mary, The Lost Weekend, which won, Mildred Pierce, and Spellbound. Objectively, The Lost, Lost Weekend. weekend. <laughs> and personally, The, the Lost, Lost Weekend. weekend. Like, Mildred Pierce as a close runner up. Yeah, I like Spellbound too. But yeah. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah. So, The Lost Weekend. We've talked about this one a lot in our Because obviously, yeah. obviously we paid Ray Milan because... Because we aren't monsters. Yeah, yeah. Because that's one of the greatest Oscar winning performances of all time. And it really... That with, like, the smart script and the haunting, nightmarish yeah. direction. All these oh, yeah. put together, you get one memorable experience. Mm-hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, you don't forget this movie after you watch nope, it. absolutely not. It's a... Feels like it always feels like you just saw it yesterday. Oh man, it really does. <laughs> does it? Because you remember every little part about this movie. You just rem yeah, it's not like one of those movies that you'll remember one great scene and yeah. then it'll be stuck in your head. There's like everything about this movie is, is a good scene. Yeah, exactly. There's not a bad scene in it. Yeah, Billy Wilder didn't know how to write a bad scene. He he and he knew how to make th this like you know. Depressing, like nerve wracking mm -hmm. movie into something so gripping, into something that you know you want to make it yeah. to the end and you want to see how it's going to end. And you want and it's not just depressing, it's yeah, so many, it's so much more than that. And I, I said, it could have easily just been, Woe is me, exactly. <laughs> and I said, 
I, I've said one of the really great things about this movie is no matter how low this character sinks, we're still willing to stick with yeah. him. Be and I, you know, because we want to see what happens to him. Yeah, totally. 1945, Anchors Away, The Bells of St. Mary, The Lost Weekend, Which Won, Mildred Pierce, and Spellbound. Objectively, The Lost, Lost Weekend. weekend. <laughs> and personally, The, the Lost, Lost Weekend. weekend. Like, Mildred Pierce as the close runner up. Yeah, I like Spellbound too. But yeah. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah. So, The Lost Weekend. We've talked about this one a lot in our Because obviously, ones, yeah. obviously we paid Ray Milan because. Because we aren't monsters. Yeah, yeah. Because that's one of the greatest Oscar winning performances of all time. And it really. That with, like, the smart script and the haunting, nightmarish yeah. direction. All these oh, yeah. put together, you get one memorable experience. Mm-hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, you don't forget this movie after you watch nope, it. absolutely not. It's a... Feels like... It always feels like you just saw it yesterday. Oh, man. It really does. <laughs> does it? Because you remember every little part about this movie. You just rem Yeah. It's not like one of those movies that you'll remember one great scene in yeah. and it'll be stuck in your head. There's, like, everything about this movie is It's a good scene. Yeah, exactly. There's not a bad scene in it. Yeah. Billy Wilder didn't know how to write a bad scene. He he And he knew how to make th this, like, you know, de depressing, like, nerve-wracking mm -hmm. movie into something so gripping. Into something that, you know, you want to make it yeah. to the end, and you want to see how it's going to end, and you want... And it's not just depressing. It's yeah. so many... It's so much more than that. And I, I said... It could have easily just been, woe is me! Exactly. <laughs> and I said... I, I've said one of the really great things about this movie is no matter how low this character sinks, we're still willing to stick with yeah. him. Be and I, you know, because we want to see what happens to him. Yeah, totally. 1946, good good year. Best Years of Our Lives, which won Henry the Fifth, It's a Wonderful Life, The Razor's Edge, and The Yearling. Objectively, both Best Years of Best Our Lives, lives and per it, personally, uh, and It's a Wonderful Life are neck and neck. Yeah, like objectively and personally, <laughs> yeah, I know uh, they're I know. pretty neck and neck. Um, so you said objectively, what you said? I'm gonna say Best Years of Our Lives. I think that really, yeah. um, also considering the time period, true, that it really showed these three stories, made all of them interesting, and again, love Artina Andrews, I guess. <laughs> true. Um, I, I would say objectively, it's a one, it's a wonderful life. Well, I'm not going to yeah. argue with that. No, either. I'm not going to argue with you either. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's let's diss these yeah. awesome movies. <laughs> Mostly, I guess, in hindsight, just because of what it's done and yeah, the what it it succeeds at doing. Mm -hmm. Uh, personally, it's really tough to pick between the two. Yeah, I know. Um, okay, these are both obviously amazing movies. Yeah. Um, and there's not- They are neck and neck. Yeah, I'm really not- I can't even, like, think of, like, bad things to bring them down to make one stand yeah. above the other. They're both excellent. Um, and just a really un great understanding of the time that is still manages to be timeless. Because when yeah. you watch The Best Years of Our Lives, even though it's after World War II, you connect with these characters. You feel everything they're feeling. You understand them completely. Watching It's a Wonderful Life, even though it's like, um, it might be, as they say, Capricorn, you understand that these characters- It's the darkest Capricorn yeah, movie ever made. <laughs> you understand these characters. You know what they're going through. Every motivation. You're not, like, watching it and thinking, but why did you do that? Like, these movies just get people. Yeah. Even though they have beautiful people playing them. <laughs> so personally, you want with Best Years? Um, or are you not sure? <laughs> well, I'm not completely sure, but I guess I'm just gonna go with Best Years of Our Lives right I now. I guess I will right now. If it was Christmas, I'd go with <laughs> Best If we uh, were in December, I'd go with that. Yeah, it's really, I mean, those are two amazing movies, both on the AFI Top 100. Yeah. Aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Yes. Um, it's, it's As a, they should be. It's a Wonderful Life is, like, really close. Is like, in the top 25. Yeah. I don't remember if it's... It might be in the top 20. Mm hmm It probably is. And, but, um, um, and every time I yeah. watch The Best Years of Our Lives, I like it more. Me too. Which is really saying something. <laughs> I think that it's... Again, I just like all the stories. I find I something like. new in it every time, yeah. too. Yeah. And I, I, like, you know, you root for these characters. You do. You want them all to succeed. And it's a very satisfying yeah. ending, like It's a Wonderful Life. Both of these endings really make you feel like you're flying, like you're just so happy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, um, best well, being years realistic. Of, yeah. Best, they both have some sort of, like, well, Best Years of Our Lives does, not so much It's a Wonderful Life, but Best Years of Our Lives does have this melancholy to it. And yeah. the ending, it is, like, yeah, like, 
Homer's married, but that doesn't mean things are going to be easy. Mm-hmm. He's going to be happy now. It's real life. It's real yeah. life. <laughs> yeah, obviously the hard times are still to come, but they... But grab the happiness while you may. Yeah. Like, you've served, you've earned it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Earning your happy ending. They both earn their happy yeah, ending. They like, um, It's a Wonderful Life is a real big earn your happy yeah, ending. Yeah, Because everything this guy does, you're like, can somebody please throw this guy a bone? Mm-hmm. So you really feel like the ending is earned when yeah. it happens. Like, it could seem like Capricorn, but you feel like, more so than all the other Capricorn mm-hmm. movies that do this, you feel he really earns it because you see it fold in front of your eyes and you see really the lengths he goes to. Yeah. And I think that it, so I think it's more successful in that department. I love how both of them portray success. Um, best years of our lives. You may be successful in the war, but you come back. Like, Dana Andrews was is the highest up, but he comes from a poor family, while Frederick March was, like, a private, and he's um, well off. He has a good job at a bank. Um, and then and it's one He's of, a sergeant, actually. Oh, he is? Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I mean. Like, um, yeah. sorry. He was... I know Dana Andrews outranked him, but, per, but socially... Yeah. When they get back home, he's doing much better than Danny Andrews is. Um, and how? And it's a wonderful life. Um, it judges success by friendship because yeah. George Bailey always thinks of it as: Did I earn the most money? Did I travel the most? When really, it's, it's not about the that, friendship yeah. you earn along the way. Because wh- when you are in trouble, who comes to help you? Not your money. Yeah. Not I, with my money. <laughs> I think it's interesting how best years of our lives shows how the different viewpoint of people who served first, people who didn't, like Frederick March yeah. working in a bank. His job is to I know. give loans to veterans. It's so sad. And he can't not give them to yeah. them because he connects with them. And he's like, no, they deserve everything we can give to them. And then there's also people like just with Danny Andrews, how he can't find a job because everybody else who stayed home during yeah, the war has, has a, a job. job. So he can't find one, which is not fair. Like, there's... But also with the bank scene with Frederick March, yeah. there's a scene where he's talking with... um you know, a sailor, yeah. and mm-hmm, how mm-hmm. he's saying, like, he has no credit, yeah. but he has a family and kids, and he's like, well, he served, isn't that credit enough? Yeah. And it's like, uh, most banks wouldn't- It should be. Yeah, like, and of course his bank isn't cool with this, but then he gives that speech yeah. towards the, tor- like, closer to the end, like, no, we should really be. Yeah. Like, as somebody who served, somebody who knows what they're talking <laughs> yeah. about, yeah, somebody who's actually been in, like, as a sergeant, he's been actually in yeah. war. Like he, sergeants are on the ground and they're yeah, you know, are, fighting yeah. with guns and they're they have to right give orders. Up, he knows how yeah, to be a leader exactly, and they're right up against the enemy. Mm-hmm. Not like you know somebody a, a a general sitting behind a desk giving orders. He's you know actually with the bloodshed. He knows what he's talking yeah. about. And it, it's a wonderful life. Is sort of like the it is more um has a more optimistic view. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Not not till the end, because no, uh, no. you have to, like, you have to sit through yeah, some, you're, yeah. This character suffers yeah. before that, but again, it really earns it, because yeah. you see every little moment, yeah. and you really... And you realize he didn't have to suffer at all, because he always yeah. had people behind him. Exactly. And it's... I think that there isn't... I mean, is there a movie out there that you root for a character more than George Bailey? I can't think of one right now. Yeah. 1948, Hamlet, which won, Johnny Belinda, The Red Shoes, The Snake Pit, and The Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Ooh. <laughs> Objectively, red The Red Shoes. shoes. Yeah. Um, and I want to say that personally, too. I think I might have to agree, and I, I, I love Johnny Belinda. I love that one, too. Yeah. Obviously, because I chose so many people to win for yeah. it. <laughs> and I, I, I do really like Treasure of Sierra Madre, too. Who doesn't, yeah, who yeah, doesn't like that one? But, yeah. <laughs> but um, The Red Shoes is special. That's what movies yeah. are all about, isn't that, it? Oh, <laughs> yeah. um, you, it would be hard to find a better-looking film ever. Yeah. Ever. It, and that's saying something for Pelton Pressburger, who made some of the best-looking movies ever, but this is- It's like a dream top. that turns into a nightmare. Yeah. It's like you are dreaming it. That's yeah. That's what it looks like. And you, you would think that, like, because I knew- this is one that you know the plot of going in, just because yeah. it's a famous plot. And so you do kind of know where it's going, but you don't care. Yeah. Because it's amazing. And then it does kind of go completely off the wall at yeah. the end. It, do- it does offer some twists and turns. It does. Because you're like, oh, she- like, oh, it's a movie that she can't choose between uh, ballet or the man she much loves. Dar- yeah, you can figure but, out, but it turned out to be much darker than that. Yeah, it, it, it is, get, like, like a true, like, ballet. Yeah, where is, her like, life reflects the ballet she's in. Yeah. Um, and 
it's one of the best roles of Anton Wahlberg, who we think is amazing. (laughs) He's always such a delight to watch in this movie. He is a delicious villain. Yes. Um, the way he's always in the shadows. And the way he talks to he um it's oh it's a little creepy you know, it not is. a little it is it creepy. is yeah. it's completely creepy and he totally becomes this character it's like him and gaslight to the extreme yeah <laughs> if it was obvious yeah exactly little, yeah 1949 all the king's men which one battleground the heiress a letter to three wives and twelve o'clock high objectively uh, and personally I guess we're going with the same thing letter to three wives. Yep. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it's um, a good one. I, I love the writing, like, all of Joseph Mankiewicz's films. He knew how to write characters. And again, three stories. They're all interesting. There's yeah. one, personally, that we find the most interesting. <laughs> it's the one they say for last. <laughs> really, um, because, like, the ending of the movie is kind of, you know, yeah. focused on this, so they know that they're the most interesting. I know. Yeah. Um, the dialogue is very biting. It's yeah. funny, like most of like Joseph Make once he knew how to be funny in just the right moments. I mean, it feels almost wrong to call it a drama. It's yeah. more like a comedy drama because there's such a lot of funny moments like, sprinkled throughout the co- it. The comedy tends to come from really awkward yeah. moments. Yeah, it's like where you just it's like, like Alice Adams. Like yeah. how it's funny. Oh my sometimes. gosh, it's like that. Like that the dinner party because even that dinner party scene. Don't we love that scene? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, like you know, just it's the most awful dinner we're party. And Southern goes through all this trouble yeah. for it, and they end up listening to the damn radio. <laughs> <laughs> except, except for Paul Douglas, he's really yeah, into eating his food. Eat his food. <laughs> I love how he just keeps. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm enjoying my food. <laughs> he just sees the commercials. Oh, and that's, that's the, the best, best part. part. <laughs> and Linda Darnell is at her all time best. Yeah, she just, I mean, oozes these with lines. Fun. She oozes wisecracks. She's so sassy. It is amazing. I know. <laughs> I, I I wanted a spin off movie about her and Paul Douglas. Yes, I want. We often joke, should we? <laughs> yeah. we? We saw this um, list of like how to make um, good like good movies better, and they were like these titles, and we were joking about how to make like these great old movies even better, and we came up with a letter to one wife, where it's just <laughs> Linda Darnell and Paul Douglas. It's just Linda Darnell and Paul Douglas. But then obviously the plot, it wouldn't really be a plot, but whatever. No. <laughs> and you wouldn't have all that mystery yeah. that's necessary. But, but it's a film I can watch every single year. Mm-hmm. And all the nominees are Yeah, good it's a year, very good yeah. year. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this one has a yeah, place close is, to my we, heart. It is the one that just manages to yeah, rise above the Yeah, the rest. one that really keeps with you. Yep. 1950, All About Eve, which won, Born Yesterday, Heart of the Bride, King Solomon's Mines, in Sunset Boulevard. Okay, so obviously we often say 1950 is a very hard year, too. Yeah. Even though not that many movies were nominated, they're all very good. Um, and writing-wise, too, you have two of the all-time greatest scripts in movie history, All About Eve and Sunset Boulevard. But which one is objectively better? I'm going to say All About Eve. I'm going to say Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I guess for me, like personally as an old movie buff, I think Sunset Boulevard's Way better if you're a fan of silent movies. Yeah, that's why I like it. I know. <laughs> um, I guess at, like yeah. pe- like a lot of people can watch all about Eve and get something from it. While with Sunset Boulevard, you can get something from it. But I think it's even more rewarding when you're like us and you know the people. Sure, but when we first saw it, we we did well, well yeah. we knew the we heard of a lot yeah. of the people, but we didn't watch silent movies beforehand. Like I didn't see Gloria Swanson in anything before this, but then we mm-hmm. watched her and like yeah, her silent movies after this and. If this movie makes more people go back to the silent era, I would then I'm, by all means, yeah, yeah. I'm very, then I'm very happy. But um, so do you also personally pick all about Eve? I'm well again in between that and Sunset Boulevard. Those are two of my favorite movies, but yeah. I guess I'll go with all about Eve because yeah, I, I, I I do like both a lot, but I would personally have to probably go to Sunset Boulevard. Yeah, well, obviously I love both of them. Um, but all about Eve is my favorite movie script of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, along with and since one part's up there, yeah, I do. Along think with all, the big sleep, and I do think all of <laughs> yeah, I do think all about Eve has one of the best scripts ever. They didn't change a word because it was so good, and yeah. uh, I think some, well cast, too. yeah, and I think Sun, Sunset Boulevard. The script is if it's not just if it's. It's either just as good as All About You, or yeah. it's just a little bit below. Yeah, but, yeah. But it's, it, but it's Billy Wilder, who's one of the all-time greatest writers. And who do you write that one with? Was it Charles Brackett? I think so. The old team, say. the old team back together again. 
Um, it was. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was Because yeah, yeah, but... he wrote um all of his early scripts with Lou Rich with him and D.M. Martian Jr. Also. Oh yeah, it. yeah. Um, and obviously Charles Brackett's also one of the greatest screenwriters of yeah. all time. Um, and all about he was Joseph Mankiewicz who. Yeah, we were just talking about. Yeah, him. honestly, he's a genius. Um, so yeah, you. It's really hard choosing between mm-hmm. these two films. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess I love Born Yesterday too. I know, me too. <laughs> Yeah, Ray Flower with Brad, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, know, always yeah, I know you love that one. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I guess also maybe because All About Eve has the amazing George Sanders performance in I, it. I do agree so, with that. That is the my favorite part of the movie. I, I, I it's, would, it's my favorite, one of my favorite Best Supporting Actor wins ever. If I, not I would pick, so I'm picking, one of the reasons I'm picking Sunset Boulevard is every time it's on TV, like, if I just catch it on TV, I, I end up, you I end up sit, watching it. I end up and watch it. Through the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. I own it, so I don't have to. I but I, I do. There's some movies you do that with. Yeah. 1951, An American in Paris, which won. Decision Before Dawn, A Place in the Sun, Quo Vadis, Quo Vadis, I keep doing that with my <laughs> Latin, um, and A Streetcar Named Desire. Why wasn't the African Queen nominated? I'd I know, isn't that. that weird? I would pick But that. objectively, we're obviously going to go with A Streetcar Named Desire. Yeah. I mean, I love that movie too. <laughs> you didn't even have to ask me. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> um, and that I, I love this movie too. It's a, mm-hmm. uh, it's a, it's even though it's depressing, it's still a fun film to watch because of the biting yeah. dialogue and the people constantly at each other's throats. And honestly, just it's watch- one of the sweatiest movies ever. <laughs> Quote, cheers. It, 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 yeah, it's the Cheers pilot. Yeah, yeah I know. I know. It, <laughs> you know that. Uh, That's fair. <laughs> um. I gave you a ring sometime, no. <laughs> but it's it's also it's interesting to watch how like what they are able to get away with, and yeah. what they're not. So that's interesting. But they still hint at the stuff they're not oh, yeah. able to get away with. So you could kind of the gay thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Should I call it that the gay thing? <laughs> the her, homosexual yeah, context. Her, her has her dead husband. Yeah, it's gay. Movie doesn't really hint at that. <laughs> It's but just, it but, makes it but, seem like he was depressed. Yeah, but we don't once when you know it, it, it yeah, yeah, and you can fill in the yeah. Thoughts, yeah, you could be like, oh yeah, okay. But I mean, it's it. I mean, considering when if you watch and you just get it from it that he's depressed, it's still it's fine. It still yeah. works fine because it still contributes to this character's heartache. Yeah, and her own like what yeah, she's really, struggling with her yeah. own mental woes. I mean, it doesn't really have to be how her husband dies, just that he's dead and he's gone and she's alone. Yeah. <clears throat> Personally, <sighs> I'm going to go with Streetcar 2. I'm close Maybe. with Un American in Paris because of the final ballet. It's the greatest thing ever put to film yeah. when it comes to musical numbers, along with the next year's Broadway Melody number. I mean, I do like A Place in the Sun. It's it. I mean, it's not perfect, and yeah. it hasn't, hasn't particularly We'll say with Un American well. in Paris, I mean, well, uh, it's um much better than um The Place in the Sun with aging, obviously. Yeah. Um, But plot-wise, it's not up to seeing in the ring, yeah. which is why I guess I don't always go with it, even though the yeah. ballet is, because you have to wait to the ending to get to the ballet, yeah. but that ballet is worth everything. But I want to go with Streetcar Named Desire because it just satisfies on all levels. I, I'll agree with that. I, I think I'll go with that personally. I, I mean, I like the way Place in the Sun is filmed. I yeah, mean, yeah. It's, it That's looks, the real star of the film. Yeah, the way, the way it looks. And yeah. Montgomery Cliff's performance. Yes, I like the acting in it a lot. Yeah. But, I mean, you get a beautiful looking movie with Streetcar, and but and you also get um great performances. Yeah. But the difference between them is, well, a place in the sun is glossy, even with the lower class it life. Is, yeah. This movie is not. Absolutely, it's it not really, glossy. Yeah. At least it's really. And rainy. I personally can appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> okay, 1952, The Greatest Show on Earth, which won. High Noon, Ivanhoe, Moulin Rouge, and The Quiet Man. So objectively, we're bet- it would be between High Noon and Quiet yeah. Man. Yeah. I'm going to go with High Noon, because at the time, too, it's, yeah. um, it personally tackled McCarthyism, which was very rare at the time, and it gave the movies courage to do it later on, because normally they had to do it, They they obviously it's through an allegory, but even it's not even really trying to hide it with some parts, um, yeah. and, like, when people will talk, like, you 
wouldn't even probably realize that it was something, but when you find out, you're like, oh yeah, that makes the movie even better. Yeah. Well, with hiding, you could kind of figure it out. Yeah. Even though it's not like Silver Load, where that's obvious, uh-huh. even though that's a Western too. The villain's name is McCarty. I feel like um, if you yeah. knew nothing about the... T- like, I feel like a lot of people who watch High Noon today would know nothing about that, but you can still at least... You can tell it's get, about injustice. Yeah, you and... can still get the message it's, co- it's yeah. coming across, because it's not like you have to get the context of the time period to get the message. It's no. not like that at all. It work. It's very timeless, Yeah, with its message. You can get that it might be an allegory for something, too. Yeah. Yeah, you can get that, and but you can also just look at it as part of this story, and it works very yeah, well Yeah. yeah. And Gary Cooper gives a very good performance. Because the first time I saw it, I didn't know it was... You know, no, I didn't know. I didn't really know much about The Blacklist then, though. It was yeah. a while ago. And I really... I think the climax of this is really good. It is, I think it's yeah. exciting. I, I like that it. it's filmed in real time, too. Like, Me the too. setup. Like, in it, so, by the time it gets to that climax, you feel, you're like, yes, I earned I know. this. <laughs> like, you're you're getting really nervous, and when it gets there, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> what's he gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> Again, like, the setup. Yeah. All oh, right, and personally, Quiet, Quiet Man. Man. Yeah. I like Moulin Rouge too, but yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah, Quiet Man is both beautiful to look at. That's for <laughs> sure. Yes, definitely. Um, but the Rolling the Green, two, like two of the best looking films. Of the yeah, year. yeah. But the Quiet Man, I want to go to like it makes me want to go to Ireland. The yeah. Rolling Green Hills. It makes they never you, if they better. have a Quiet Man tour there, like, <laughs> no. Ireland, uh, like you wish curious. that Ireland is that beautiful. Because what if it's not? <laughs> what if like they built a you know, like, a Made it look more beautiful on top than it was. was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What if it's a mini mall? <laughs> <laughs> but it's, uh, the film is fun. It's funny. Yeah. It's enjoyable. It's beautiful. Quotable. Quote, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, it, it's, I, I call it John Ford's funniest movie. Yeah. And, because it's just funny. Yeah. That's the whole point of it. It's a comedy. It's a comedy about these two characters and, like, a, cl- a, cul- a clash of cultures, which I- clash of cultures. Which I really water, like in movies. Yeah. I like that kind of plot, the comedy. Yeah. And, like, their marriage is funny. And, it is. Yeah, the way- how, the, like, when the bed how breaks. How bossy she is is funny. Yeah. When the bed breaks, that's just one of the It is amazing. Moments. And when- and later when Barry Fitzgerald walks in sort of and he sees the broken bed. What would you possibly think? Yeah. How do they get away with that one? I was recently talking to uh I was talking to my mom about the quiet man. We showed it to our parents um just one day because we were like, Oh, this is a good movie. And um We I, do that sometimes. Sometimes yeah. it works, sometimes it does yeah. not. But I I, I I was saying I was like, Oh, because I was just thinking that day of uh the scene where um she's talking in like the old language yeah. to um yeah to um the priest war- ward bond and like how you can't understand what mm-hmm. she's saying but no. you get from the context what she's talking about like how she's talking about his pajamas with yeah. buttons and like a, sleep- <laughs> yeah. a yeah. sleeping bag because she's because she like makes a gesture yeah. for buttons yeah yeah it's like i think you just is like a sleeping <laughs> bag <laughs> it's funny <laughs> 1953, there's From Here to Eternity, which one? Julius Caesar, The Robe, Roman Holiday, and Shane. Now you're gonna go with The Robe. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's a joke. Definitely not. Yeah. Yes, that's a joke. Okay, objectively. Shane. Shane. Yeah, personally, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> personally, I'm gonna go with Julius Caesar. I, I thought you might. Well, um, because it, I guess it must be hard to make Shakespeare really interesting because. Um, I guess he's more interesting to read than to watch sometimes, because mm-hmm. you really have. Because sometimes it's since the dialogue is very dated, you have to really read it to get the whole gist of it. But watching this movie with the performances, especially James Mason, yeah. we, I cannot stress enough: James Mason yes. is the best part of this movie. And if you guys are going to be talking about Marlon Brando, get out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's fine, but it's really James yeah, Mason's movie. It is. And so I think that's just why I had, I didn't think I would really like this movie because we were reading the play at school and we're like, oh, let's get the movie. That'd be fun. Then we ended up really liking the movie. That's because Shakespeare is meant to be performed. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, I, so I read the book, Shane. Yeah. I read it after I saw the movie because I read it for a class. And that's at the time when I read the human comedy. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) After I saw the movie. But it the it's exact the book and the movie are like exactly alike. The only like thing, the human comedy. <laughs> the only thing that's really different is Shane is tall. <laughs> but we can uh, easily get look past. I that. can look past it because I'm glad I love him. Yeah, well, and he's beautiful. I I just think that I think this is an interesting movie. It's a it is yeah because 
Is complex. She, yeah, you, know, you wouldn't expect a movie like this to be complex. Because Shane is so mysterious. Yeah. But yeah, you don't need to find out what he is. And you, why, never, you never do. No, that's why I like when how our whole culture is in reboot. Like, crazy. Yeah. Right now. I'm like, for the love of God, don't reboot Shane because they're going to give him a backstory. I'm like, we don't need that. And in most movies like this, you do get a backstory, which is fine. Yeah, that's um, fine. But, and but Shane doesn't what, need one. That's not what, what this is yeah, about. Yeah, it's not what it's about. It's not about the backstory. The whole thing is about that he's mysterious, but yeah. yet they put their trust in him. But that's not the plot, too. It's not what, what happened to Shane. And we're also <laughs> supposed to be from uh, um, Brandon DeWilda's um, point of view. Yeah. We're supposed to be from his point of view, where he doesn't know what's going on. It's hinted the um, the adults who kind of guess what's going on. Yeah. There's, like, a line in the, in the like, it's in the book where um, he says, uh, don't get too close to Shane. Mm. He's a great guy, but don't get too close to him. And that shows, oh, he's done something bad. You yeah. don't know what it is, and you never find I guess out. Something, I'm get, I, would always, I guess you could assume something against the law. Yeah. That's, what it is probably, exactly? He's probably we don't know. Uh, he's probably an outlaw. outlaw. That's what I always gather yeah. from it. But what it is, we don't know. Yeah, what but... it is, well, you know, why he did it, don't know. But we don't have to. But but he's a nice guy. That's all we need to know. Yeah, we're supposed and we're supposed to look at this from his perspective, yeah. from Brandon DeWalda's perspective, because we're hero like worship. Him. Yeah, so we end up looking at Shane, similar to he does. We're a little more um, savvy. Yeah, we're, we're much more savvy than he is. But we also can see what he admires about Shane. Shane is awesome. He is cool. But in that mysterious aura that he has is is um, alluring. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, you do think, oh, there might be something about him. But you're like, I don't care. I would trust him too. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in times like this. When you're <laughs> and one of my favorite actors is in that too. Van Heflin? Yep. <laughs> You're not gonna mention that. <laughs> I, I, I I did mention it. Oh, you did? What? You said one of my favorite actors. Yeah. Today, and you didn't say I knew Because I knew you were going to say it. Oh, you were waiting for me. I was waiting for you to... The banter. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to guide the audience there. <laughs> what, did you have trouble guessing? <laughs> <laughs> like, you didn't mean Jack Palance? <laughs> no, no, she didn't. <laughs> 1954, The Kane Mutiny, The Country Girl, On the Waterfront, which won, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, and Three Coins in the Fountain. Objectively, On the Waterfront, and probably personally, too. Seven Brides, although it's hard picking between them, Seven Brides for Seven well, Brothers. Well, objectively, I was going to say On the Waterfront, personally, I was going to say Seven Brides for Seven Brothers. Those, it's hard They're to so say. They're so different, I know. They're so different, because I love Seven Brides for Seven Brothers way more than I probably should, but, um, I love it just as much, don't worry. Yeah, but- uh, it's hard to say. I'll I'll, I'll get there later. Well, okay. Let's first let's talk about on the waterfront. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, well, this is um. It really is a. Uh, we kind of talked about this. When yeah, we, talked about we did. Right now. Um, it's a deep film. Um, on many layers, like yeah. a lot of Ilya Kazan's work, it is almost like a stage, like what you would expect from a stage play, but it's on the screen. The way um the characters develop, it's a lot like um. Like something you would see Arthur Miller do, mm -hmm. um, but um, I guess more grittier, like a Tennessee Williams play. I guess it's if the two of them mesh together. Yeah. Um, and great performances, very down to earth, um, not glamorous in the least, and yet, <clears throat> um, very cinematic. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's so interesting. And I think that, and I always, when every time I talk about this movie, I end up saying it's timeless because it really is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. It hasn't. It, it hasn't lost an ounce of impact or its edge over no. the years. It's still as powerful as it once was, and it's still as relatable as it once mm -hmm. was, and it's still as moving as it once was. And I think that in it, 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 any time it could have ever been syrupy, it's not. It completely throws all that stuff out the window, yeah. and it just gives a realistic, good, and really likable experience. It does. It does. Uh -huh. You really like Terry Malloy. Definitely. It's only a character you yeah. wouldn't like, but here you do. Or one you might be a little put off yeah. by, but you're not at all like that with him. Like, yes, has he made mistakes? Sure, but do you understand where he's coming from? Absolutely. Oh, boy. Absolutely. Is, is it his fault? No. no. <laughs> yeah. And you find that out, um, your heart just goes out to him, because normally, I guess, movies would make, because movies wouldn't make him so dimensional, you'd just be like, oh, he's just a... He's like, yeah, just a you, big You're stiff. supposed to like him because he's... 
he, you know, Marlon Brando is handsome, so you should like him. No, it <laughs> doesn't work that way. Yeah, it's much more complex than that. Yeah, yeah, he's handsome in this, but I mean, he is. yeah, but he's his character is really likable. Yeah, in, but also complex. All right. Let's seven see. Brides for Seven Brothers, my personal pick. And I might go with it, too. <laughs> um, I love the songs here, yeah. um, and the settings. Um, I like, can listen to Lo Lonesome Podcast <laughs> yeah. all day. Yes, you're beautiful. Hide wherever you, you may be. be. Love the booming voice of Howard Keel. Uh, I, I love Howard Keel's voice. <laughs> it's just like, it, I think that MGM really, you know, got like, something like, special yeah, with him. Like they did. With that um, voice of his. The baritone. Um, yeah. And wonderful Jane Powell. Don't yes. we adore that woman. <laughs> she, is, she is just, you know, the um, essence of being likable. Like, Absolutely. America's sweetheart. Yeah. Um, and um, with Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, I love the hand-painted backgrounds. It's kind of like yeah. Brigadoon. Like how some people complain about it. Don't come near me with that. Yeah. Um, Are I, you going to complain about it on The Wizard of Oz? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it adds here. like a storybook quality to yeah. it and you still believe you're in the mountains and yeah. obviously the big star of the movie is the ma the masculine dancing and you have amazing dancers in this movie the you best dancers ever yeah you have tommy rawl russ tamblin yeah. mark platt uh -huh. those are amazing dancers yeah. um and they came from the stage too. A lot of them, um, like Mark did. He was in the ballet, actually, the ballet yeah. russe, not too shabby. I'm glad that they got, like, you know, they got actual dancers, dancers. for the for these. And you can tell, yeah. it's not like they got. They're like, oh well, let's just get some good looking yeah. men. Let's get some actors we have under contract, yeah. and let's make just, them stumble around yeah, dancing. And we'll just do like smaller versions of the dances, and people, but people will go see it. No, they wanted to make a good yeah. product, so they... Because, honestly, this is one where you have to get the best dancers mm -hmm. possible, because it requires the best dancing and, possible. And um, some of Michael Kidd's... That's fine. Some of Michael Kidd's best choreography ever, too. Which is really saying something, because, obviously, he's a legendary choreographer. Um, and this is really the kind of thing he did well. He really um added perspective to his dancing. Um, he added character to his dancing. Yeah. And there's such charm in the musical numbers, obviously, that barn-raising scene where they... Yeah. That's probably the most famous part of the movie. Yeah. Um, and um, it's like that, where they're trying to impress the girls. It's an incredibly likable moment. Yeah, and it's such a... And I, it's a knockout. No matter how many times you see it, it is a knockout. And it's really funny, too, like, how they read this about the sobbing woman. It's a great <laughs> it is a Greek thing. They're like, well, it will work when we do it. No! The women don't like that, yeah. actually. <laughs> and I, I know that this one gets a lot of flack from uh, a lot of women and don't like this movie. We're we're both um yeah we're both feminists um yeah. and we have we have no problem with it because we accept the movie for what it is. It's a you know, it's a what, great well, movie. Who, who watches this movie like let's take this seriously? Yeah, <laughs> let's take let's just take everything that's going on and act like it actually happens. Yeah, and can happen, but whatever. It's a great movie and. Uh, I mean, if you are like that, like these men just don't know how to act with women because they've never yeah. been near them. They've it, been out in, they've been up in the mountains forever. If you feel that way about the story, that's one thing. But yeah, can you at least appreciate the dances and yeah. the, the, song, the musical numbers in this? Absolutely, I think. Yeah, mm. maybe I'll pick this one for personal. Okay. It's hard to say. It is because they're so different, <laughs> but um, about as different as they come. Yeah, but it's a. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's one of my favorite musicals. It's mine, too. Yeah. 1955, we have Love is a Many Splendored Thing, Marty, Which One, Mr. Roberts, Picnic, and the Rose Tattoo. Objectively, I'm going to go with Marty, the winner. I'm between that and Mr. Roberts. Well, so is I. <laughs> yeah. I, Marty is more of an emotional roller coaster. I guess that's why I chose it. Yeah, it, I feel like that it's. I mean, it's obviously not as much fun as Mr. Roberts. Yeah, but. Mr. Roberts has that um, stage background to fall on, mm -hmm. so it knows what it's aiming for. Yeah, Marty had the TV movie, but I had to make it into a cinematic it experience, did, which is, it, can be difficult. Yeah. It, whereas, like, the play of Mr. Roberts, like, actually has things moving around. In yeah. There. It wasn't a very dormant play. No, not at all. It's, at, like, when I see clips of the play, I'm like, it, wow, I can't believe it did yeah. that, but it would have to, to in order yeah. To, yeah, to keep up with the story, but. Yeah, I, 
it's again, it's difficult to say, but I both movies are um really great mm-hmm. and but bo- both have completely different tones. Yeah. But I think Marty's coming from a more difficult standpoint because it has to be it has to be moving and heartwarming without being sticky. And I think it does that. Yeah, it's not sticky in the least. Yeah. Very relatable. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, you understand where every character's coming from, like, the mother who doesn't want to be left alone. Yeah. Like, I mean, you obviously, you're like, oh, honey, you know, he has to leave yeah, sometime. Yeah, you can't, like, live for but your you, son. But why would she want to be left alone? Yeah. <laughs> it's, because that's a depressing thing. Yeah. Yeah. A real problem people can relate to. Yeah, and the acting's really good in this movie. It is. Yeah. It's, and it's a touching film. And it, it is, it, it will, yeah. It will break your heart and then mend it. It's <laughs> yeah. <a film>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, personal. Mr. Roberts? I'm gonna go with Picnic. Oh, well, of course you would go with that. Well, I love Mr. Roberts, Yeah, too. I'll go with Mr. Roberts. Um, well, Picnic, I love the theme song. <laughs> um, it, it will get stuck in your head. Um, and it's a, and again, based off a of play, not in the least spit stagey at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's an incredibly beautiful, touching love story but, uh, between two unlikely lovers that happen to find each other. Um, and it's a beautiful film to look at. Yeah, definitely. Um, very well done. Um, and, um, and it could easily have been depressing. It's not, it actually ends on an uplifting note for these characters. Um, cause at first they're depressed, but they learn through love and, um, understanding that they don't have to be depressed. So it's, um, it's a hopeful movie and every, and it is, has a great cast in it too. Um. It's even in the supporting parts, like, Rosalind Russell's pretty damn funny in this movie. Mr. Roberts, because fun. <laughs> fun! Yeah. 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 It, it, it's... For unbeatable actors. Yeah, great acting. Just, you know, makes you laugh no matter how many times you've seen mm-hmm. it. It's um, a bright, colorful experience. And it's just one you can just sit back and watch, and it's... You get... It also has, like, this underlying theme of, like, the tragedy of war. In yeah. It. It's not front and center, but it is definitely a constant presence throughout yeah. this film. And it's almost like the white elephant in the room. Yeah, exactly. Like, it, the war like, is... But it's World War II. <laughs> yeah, the war is talked about, but it's also not really... Because it's, it's not a battleship, yeah. so... Exactly, like... It's the shit nobody would want to be on in the war because you would just feel so useless. Yeah, because they don't hear a shot fired. Yeah, you would. You would feel. You don't hear any guns. You don't hear any explosions. Nope. You would feel. How is it fair that you know all these people are dying and I'm stuck on this boat doing nothing? Yeah, but cleaning it. Yeah, (laughs) you are, and you know, looking after a palm tree. It's really important that you (laughs) look after this palm tree. 1957. Some good ones. Bridge on the River Kwai, which one? Peyton Place, Sayonara, 12 Angry Men, It Witness for the Prosecution. Objectively, I'm going to go with 12 Angry Men. Me too. Um, that's one of the best film to stay, take place in one room. And I love movies that take place in a secluded spot. Um, that are able to be interesting. Yeah, yeah, because I think it adds tension. It's like when you watch Dog Day Afternoon, it, it adds such tension even though it takes place in that one bank. Yeah. You know, movies that can do that really, I yeah. just really personally love. Um, and 12 Angry Men is the b- best example of that. Um, you're agree. you're with them the whole way. There's not a line of dialogue that goes by that you are out of. People that don't watch old movies have come up to me and said, I saw 12 Angry Men. I liked that one. And people you wouldn't expect, like, yeah. to um really like movies that just talk the whole time. Um, I guess because in our, t- our today's si- society if, you know, you have to cut every three seconds and just and you can't talk for too long because that might be interesting and you might have to think. Yeah, I'm definitely going with this objectively too. I might go with it personally as well. Um, um yeah, I, yeah. I think that I think um it's like between that and pain and place for me personally. Okay. I think that this film and I've always said that every time I catch it on TV I always say, Oh, I'll watch some of it. Yeah. And I end up watching, watching the whole, the whole thing. Because I have to make it to the end. Every, and, again, and again we own it. <laughs> yeah, we own it. But every time I get sucked in. Yeah. Like the one day it was like, Well, I have to see him be plenty I have to see him get innocent. That, that, yeah, I do it every time I'm like, I'll watch up till this scene. Yeah. Okay, I'll watch it till this scene, and then it's the end. Because yeah. I'm like, I, I can't just not see him turn everyone around. It pull I no matter how many times I've seen it, it pulls me in. Yeah. 
And I think it's, um... I'm still so interested in it after all these years of seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. And even though I always know the outcome going yeah. in, because I've seen it a number of times, I always look forward to it, because I always, like, get a thrill watching him just turn everybody around. It, it, it's like when you watch a movie that, um, there's one part you don't like, like, it, and sadly you feel like if you watch it again, you can change things. Yeah. Like, with Television Man, when you watch it, you just want to be there when it happens, or else you feel like... Like it's You're not letting them down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're letting that boy on trial down. You have to see him become innocent. Yeah. Um, that's what it feels like. Um, and it was also um based off a play and yeah. it was in a TV or, movie. Yeah, a TV it was a TV movie, movie yeah. too with Robert Cummings, French Tone. A great cast in the TV yeah. movie. Um and and but this one is very cinematic. It it's um beautifully done. Yeah, it's definitely with a lot of intense close ups. It takes advantage of the camera. Yeah. And that's what and that's what all films that take place in one spot mm-hmm. do. You know, Diary Van Frank, the, yeah. the, the um connection. All yeah. these films that take place in just one spot know how to use the camera and know how to yeah. make the audience like always watch what's going on and be and be listening and be interested. And because all the characters are interesting. Yeah. It has a very good cast, and even though at the time Henry Fonda was the only no one, there's a lot of stars to be in this, like Martin Balsam, mm-hmm. Jack Klugman, um, Jack Warden, um, yes, um, yeah. Um, so E.G. Marshall, yeah, um, a lot of well-known character actors, and um, so it's all, um, so just seeing the cast today is even more appreciated yeah. because you know all everybody these did something pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Okay, 1958, Auntie Mame, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, The Defiant Ones, Gigi, Which One, and Separate Tables. Those are wonderful movies. All right, objectively, The Defiant Ones. I agree. Um, and that's, um, and I love movies like that, especially, again, we like prison movies, and escape yeah. prison movies are no exception. <laughs> yeah. And Sydney Poitiers in this. Yeah, so naturally, one. Virginia Therefore. likes it very much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and very poignant, um, yeah. tension-packed, and a very good supporting cast. Lon Chaney Jr., mm-hmm. Charles McGraw, personal mm-hmm. place in my heart. <laughs> um, Kara Williams. Yeah. yeah, good cast. Theodore Bickle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a... It's an exciting movie. It's a it's a movie about growth. It's a, mm-hmm. and that succeeds in what it does because it doesn't they do realistically it, grow realistically. Yeah, and it doesn't beat you over the head with no. it. it. It grows, yeah, naturally, and it grows successfully. This is the kind of film Stanley Kramer thrived at. Yeah, and um, Richard Brooks directed it, and this right. is very uh, Richard Brooks, right? He directed it. Or it wasn't Kramer, was it? Did, Did Kramer produce it? Kramer? Yeah, he directed it. He Kramer directed it. Yeah, maybe Richard Brooks wrote it. Oh, he might have been inspired by it. I think I'm thinking because he worked with Sidney Poitier beforehand. Yeah, and I'm, then because he was because Richard Brooks did a lot of movies like this. Yeah, because he wrote a lot of progressive I don't know, screenplays. Oh, Richard Brooks did Cat on the Hot Tin Roof. That's what. Yeah. <laughs> I was completely off. But okay. it is a very Richard Brooks like movie because it is a lot of movies. It's like a Stanley Kramer movie. But yeah, yeah, they both did. Very it has the hard hitting bite of Richard. They Brooks, both have but, very yeah. progressive. Um, um, screenwriting and yeah, direction and yeah. yeah, it has the bite of Richard it Brooks, but it has the which he heart. put in. Yeah, he put in Cat on the Roof, but you're right. It has, has the heart, heart and soul, of, of, soul of Kramer because Kramer. Kramer always was um more so than Richard, way more so than Richard Brooks. Yeah. He was always he always had um a heart and he always had a, a inspirational yeah tone mm-hmm. that. Even, like, in the most depressing yeah. moments in those movies, like, there was always something inspirational mm-hmm. about it. Yeah. And this kind of, um, it takes his Home of the Brave up to the next level, too. Yeah. He did Home of the Brave. He produced it. Yeah. Okay. And now, personally, um, I'm going to go with Auntie Mame. It's one Shocker. of my, yeah, it's <laughs> one of my favorite movies. I also love Gigi. Um, it's one of the most stunning movies ever made, but Auntie Mame makes... My heart full. It's <laughs> one of the funniest movies ever made, um, and Ros and Russell has never been better. Um, and I could watch it over and over again and still laugh at it. I find picking a personal one to be really tough. It is. I know. I said it's a good year. Yeah, I do like Auntie Mame a lot. I like separate tales too. But yeah, I like separate tales. Also. Yeah, I think uh, it could just be because I've seen Auntie Mame so many times. Yeah. Um, it, it's a, it is a funny movie. It really, and it said you still laugh at it, don't you? Yeah, definitely. And also, unlike separate tables, I've seen Auntie Mae yeah. done 
as shit. So <laughs> um, I, I, I yeah. appreciate this movie. Even yeah, with more. Mame. Yeah, it makes yeah. you love anti Mame all the more, which you didn't think was possible, but you do. <laughs> um, and it could have been. If you didn't like anti Mame, watch Mame. You're going <laughs> to love it. Yeah. Um, and it could have been Sadie, and it's not. Yeah, definitely. Pretty much all those films, all these I films know, yeah, a lot of not, except for the Defiant ones. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah, yeah. Even though Gigi, Gigi was, was on the stage, stage, stage but it, since it's a musical, they tend not to be staged. No. Nineteen fifty nine: Anatomy of a Murder, Ben Hur, which one? The Diary of Anne Frank, The Nun Story, and Room at the Top. Objectively, Anatomy of a Murder. Yep. Yeah, that's a really good film. Um, yeah. And again, a courtroom drama, but you're, and they talk a lot, but you are drawn completely in, and Jimmy Stewart it gives a tour de force. Yeah, it ages It does, flawlessly. it does. Yeah. This is still just as relevant today as it was back yeah. then. Yeah, the black and white really suits the film, yeah. just like t with 12 Angry Men, and it's, the the harsh tone that it has is very appropriate. Mm -hmm. And it's not off-putting at all. You would think, like, a movie, oh, with that, that you know, with this hard-hitting topic and the way it's presented and the way it's handled, it would be a little off-putting. But yeah. it, it grabs you and pulls you in. Especially in such a disgusting um, subject matter. Yes. Um, and it has a score by um, Duke Ellington, yeah. which makes it even better. <laughs> yeah. The Jimmy Stewart character plays, like, a jazz enthusiast, yeah. so it's fun to have that when Duke Ellington added. writes a, um, a score you remember it yeah. so yeah I always remember this it's one like too it's like when Quincy does a score you know? it is yeah. it is it just has that boom boom yeah like, it sticks with you um personally I, I'm gonna go with Anatomy of a Murder too although I really like Diary of Anne Frank also but I'm I, gonna go with Anatomy of a Murder I might go with Diary of Anne Frank well I, I obviously like yeah. that one too I, I it just and again, stays, it's very dormant as well. That's one, I like. I, that's one of the big reasons I like it. it stays, and it's based off a play. Could have been stagey as yeah, well. Yeah, it stays in one place, and it's based off a play. But yeah, I don't feel like I'm watching a play at all. I wish I could have seen a play of this. I think that would have been a lot of that would very interesting. With Susan Strasberg was in it. Oh yeah, I think that the um, at, like George Stevens' direction is really good in this. This and is a kind of film he excels at yeah. little simple things that he really just brings to perspective and i find and yeah it all takes place in the attic yeah you don't, you don't see anything outside the attic there's except that for like the staircase there's so. that wonderful shot with um ann and peter looking at the window and they can't see yeah. anything outside of it you just see what is a window um, yeah but they can't look. it's so it could have been this nice little room it is this nice little romantic moment but it could have just been but it's in almost incomplete without seeing outside that window yeah because they're just prisoners yeah and it's even more heartbreaking because it's based off a true story I, I totally agree and it's also and it's based off like we have the diary accounts of what happened yeah and this is it essentially falls, what yeah happened. it falls in quite yeah. closely and uh i didn't actually read her diary growing up i mm. looked it up after watching the movie. Like, oh, did you? Because I know you read it. My school, like, our school never made us read this, and I think that's They a crime. should have. I think that is a crime, because I think we really should have read Actually, this. didn't read I've read books about her, but I never read the diary in full. Oh, because I know, experts I know from you've it. read experts. Yeah, because I, 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 growing up, I knew about her. Growing up, I, I liked reading about her. <laughs> growing up, I knew all about the story because yeah. you told me about it. I liked reading yeah. about her and Harriet Tubman. I liked reading about happy things, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> you were a very happy child. But <laughs> I. I like this one, I really like this because I also like how the characters are, like, how they- uh, Claustrophobic. Yeah, it's claustrophobic, and how they all kind of go at each other's they throats after a while, you don't blame them, because no. you would. Any sane person. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, no matter how nice these people are, I'd be like, you're getting on my nerves. Yeah. Like, yeah. Go away. Like, and you, you obviously all have to be together, mm -hmm. and you all have to put up with each other, and- like with each other's flaws, with each other's annoyances, yeah. like how um Anne likes to talk a lot. Yeah. Like how she's a girl. Like, she's a young girl. How dare she, you know, yeah. have a personality. But um like how some people are like, oh she doesn't shut up. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, how dare she try to have There's fun. nothing else to do there but talk. Yeah. Um exactly. and Joseph Skillcrowd um gives his best performance and should have been nominated as we said Definitely. before. Yeah. All right. At the 60s now. For 1960, the nominees were The Alamo, The Apartment, 
Omar Gantry, Sons and Lovers, and the Sundowners. I'm in the apartment one, and, and objectively, and personally, I guess we're both, gonna both say the apartment. Yep. Yep. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, she knew I was gonna say it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so with the apartment, um, this is, again, Billy Wilder, um, and this really started a tr- new era for Billy Wilder, because before he was kind of, um, sparkling comedy in the vein of Blue Bridge, and now he's yeah. really going off a more deeper sexual end, because before Blue Bridge alluded to sex, he, Billy Wilder flat out talks about sex. He makes it um, out in the open. His plots revolve around sex. Yeah. And this is um, a prime example of that. And really, after this, you do see his films reflect more of it. Ermila Deuce um, and um, Kiss Me Stupid, films like that, they really um, just flat out are, are talk about sex and are sex, com- literally sex comedies. Um, this one mm-hmm. has... Um, very good serious moments as well as funny ones and yeah. it's um it's more funny than it is serious um because the serious moments work. yeah exactly yeah. um but it's a because it's a billy wilder movie obviously it's gonna have more um these little funny moments sprinkled throughout even if it's a serious part yeah. like the moment when you find out she's um almost committed suicide then you have joyce jameson coming out like yeah. i broke a nail trying to open <laughs> and that always cracks me up because it's just yeah. <clears throat> because we it's not quote that all the time. I know because it doesn't it doesn't fit there, so yeah. it just makes you laugh because it's just like whoa. Okay. Yeah, all right, she's here. Like, yeah, exactly. Right. Um, and it's just like you wouldn't expect him to just go there, but he does. Yeah, just having this serious moment, and then suddenly breaking out with a joke. Yeah, yeah. It's it. I always say it succeeds in what most movies can. It successfully combines high comedy and high drama. Mm-hmm. Not like high comedy, like slapstick, but I mean high yeah. comedy, like you know something like I broke a nail when I was trying, to, <laughs> <laughs> like right after a suicide. Like she a looks su- like suicide. Marilyn Monroe, <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny. Yeah, yeah. 1961. There's Fanny, The Guns of Navarone, The Hustler, Judgment at Nuremberg, and West Side Story, which won. And objectively, and, and personally, personally, we're both going to yeah. stay again. The West, the winner, West Side Story. Um, we grew up on we this. Did. Like, I think a lot of people do. And I was just saying, I don't think I've ever seen this and I'll cry. Yeah. And not just like, oh, a tear. Like, no, I, it's real yeah. funny. I remember the first time I saw this, my pillow got all soggy. <laughs> I was 11 and I, when I first saw it, and I was crying so much, my pillow got all gross. I couldn't get up to turn off the TV because I was crying so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um... The music and the dances are The dances awesome. are some of the best put on screen. Yes. Definitely. Even with all their cuts, I will forgive it because it's so good. Yeah, when they're that good. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. For for creative art. I, I know these people can dance, too. Like, a lot of movies today, when they do that, I'm like, can you really dance? But with these, I know these guys can dance. Yeah. It's there to be to show a perspective of it. And um, one of my personal favorites is when they do Cool in the Garage. And I know that one was probably the most strenuous number they filmed yeah. in the movie. They, had, they kept, like, ripping on their clothes because it was so strenuous. Um, so, um, I but it really is most visually stunning. Yeah. And the performances are good, too. Mm-hmm. And normally yeah, a movie like this, performances, performances yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> and a movie like this, performances normally take a back seat, but not so much in this one. And a lot of them were dubbed, except for George Shakiris, even though he doesn't get a solo, but he actually could sing. I love his voice, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, and Mir- Rina Marino was only dubbed on one part. Um, and it's during a duet, so you can't really hear it. Yeah. Um, but um, but see them dance is just really something special. You see these such talented people um, and young people and some of the best dancers at the time really come together and every song is a home run yeah there's not there's not a song that you're like oh well, we can skip this one you mm-hmm. want to watch you want to watch them all and i know it takes on a different point from the stage with just that it switches a song cool because that was originally sung by riff and they and R- officer Kus- krupke was after the deaf and the movie's like well nobody's gonna want to yeah. see this like hard song after death that's so and true. even some of the stage the people didn't really like that so much on the stage so they switched it to before i'm, I'm really glad they did yeah it, and i knew that russ tamblin who played riff was a very good physical 
um, when an officer Krupke gave him the ability to do that, like, be more, more of the yeah. center and do, like, kind of his backflips and over, like, uh-huh. and show his comedic skills, which he was good at, too. Where he's, like, just jumping. Yeah. And, yeah. So, um, so I guess, I think it really helps the movie, although I know some people will disagree because they're, I just guess. because it's not the exactly. original. <laughs> um, That's literally the makes, only reason why It is, because it makes more that. sense, I think. It makes way more sense, like, tonally. Because cool makes way more sense about yeah. them. Like, okay, we're, like, we can't yeah. uh, let our, um, what we just witnessed, like, they're, get to our Because they're angry when they yeah. dance this. They say, you know, I want to go, go, cool. Like, they're so angry. Bus, bus cool. I know, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Good part. <laughs> 1962. Warrants of Arabia. Which one? The Longest Day, The Music Man, Mutiny on the Bounty, and To Kill a Mockingbird. I know objectively you we're both going to say Lawrence of Arabia, yes. and I know Virginia's going to say that personally, because yeah. it's her favorite movie. Yeah. Now, let's talk about Lawrence of Arabia. And personally, I'm going to say- <laughs> Yeah, personally, I'm going to say The Music Man, but we'll talk about that one later. Okay. Um, but Lawrence of Arabia, yeah, this is a good one. Um, yeah. And, um, very paramount in the way yes. it was filmed. Like, this is really just an epic- this is an epic. Uh-huh. When you think of epic, this yeah. is it. <laughs> I talked a lot about this when I picked Peter O'Toole for Best mm-hmm. Actor. And we also talked about when we picked Omar Sharif. Yes, when we picked Omar Sharif for Best Supporting Actor. Um, I think that this film, the way it looks, and that the script and the story of the and the main character, I think just everything comes together very well. And I'm just, like I always say, I'm, I'm a sucker sucker for gorgeous visuals yeah. and this is one of the best looking Packed movies ever made it. yes and i mean it has like the way it uses colors mm-hmm. the way it uses um shadows the way it just it just pops off the screen and there's so many famous shots when like when he's on top of the train when My he blows out movie, yeah, yeah when he blows out the light on um, when he's yeah, riding yelling no prisoners yeah um uh-huh. you just see all the horses coming down the, the scene dunes. where he's at night when he's walking in the sand and he's deciding whether yeah, to mm-hmm. go to um to Agrabah. Um uh, I probably butchered that that name right now. I but, think um, you said it right okay. Now. I don't know much either about but, <clears throat> but um, sounded right. <laughs> and I think that it's just And also even the opening scene, like when you see him fall off, like that's um yeah. a stunning scene too. Yeah. Suddenly shot. And I, I think like some people might be the only I think some people, and I talk to some people about this, they're like, oh, but that movie gets really dark yeah, as it goes movie, along. It's, it's not for, po- yeah. It's supposed to, but yeah. Epics aren't for everyone. No, but <clears throat> the way- They're not so much for the casual movie viewer. No. At least, I don't think this is, I'm glad I yeah. waited to see this one until I was a bit older, because I think that if I saw it I when know, I was yeah. younger, you I would have, You would have probably been bored, because you wouldn't have mm-hmm. really probably been I don't think. It, yeah, I don't think it would have been bored, I think I just would have been, I think the length would have gone to me, Yeah, and it didn't do that when I saw it. I remember it. the first time I saw Gone with the Wind, I had to keep turning it off and coming back to it, because I couldn't <laughs> yeah. sit through a four-hour movie, now it's nothing, but I back yeah. then I did the, never sat through a movie that The long. length is actually what always kept, like, when I was, like... In high school, what kept me from seeing it made me wait till college. Yeah. Like, if I was a freshman in college when I first saw this. And I'm glad, and I also think the the whole, the char- the complexities of the characters want to have spoken to me as much until I got a bit older and I was really able mm-hmm. to understand this character and the dark dimensions his mind goes to. And I think you can't have the story without that, so I don't think, I think... I totally understand why the movie gets dark, because that's what the movie's about. Yeah. He's supposed to become a hero and then become, like, an anti-hero. Well, it, it's based off a true story, yeah. too. I mean, they're not gonna, like, fake it yeah. just so you don't get depressed yeah. watching it. A, a man who, like, say who helped save, um, the the Arabs in the desert, mm. and then never went to the desert again, yeah. you're like, well, what happened? And it's... We see what happened. Yep. And it's disturbing, but it's also, you know, you never forget it once you see it. And no. it's... I don't think there's... In years, there hasn't been a film to even come uh, close visually and psychologically to this one. Mm-hmm. I think David Lean... Visually, David Lean's movies, you know, his other movies, like Dark yeah. are gorgeous, and they also are like that, but I feel like... It's his magnum opus. This is his magnum opus, and you want to deny that I know, no yeah and I'd, uh, even though i'm more even, yeah even though yeah. i'm more dr shivago i i, I love that. shivago too well yeah, yeah. I, and i just know that this is his magnum opus <laughs> yeah i think that this, i know when i see it yeah i think this is you know as good as it gets 
Of course, because it's your favorite movie. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, now I'm gonna pick The Music Man. Um, it makes, again, and this is just, I like movies that make me happy. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes one that you could pop in, um, anytime at all. And this one is a delightful musical, well cast, um, based off a Broadway show that also man still manages to be cinematic. Um, and I love Robert Preston's voice, actually. Yeah. Um, so I like hearing it. Um, the songs, especially with these songs, they really are suited for his voice. Um, and the supporting cast is a lot of fun, too. You have Buddy Hackett, Hermione Gingold, mm -hmm. um, and, um, I'm sorry, um, and Shirley Jones is the leading lady, um, and so she's the perfect leading lady for this mm -hmm. type of movie, too. Ronnie. Yeah, the fantastic Ron Howard, um, who's adorable yeah. as the boy with the lisp. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it's an incredibly memorable musical. It has period charm. Um, it's a delightful film to sit through. And again, Robert Preston's voice. <laughs> America, America, for 1963, by the way, I can say. Cleopatra, <laughs> How the West Was Won, Lilies of the Field, and Tom Jones, which won. Objectively. Tom Jones? Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. say Tom Jones, because it's... Fun. <laughs> um, visually, this film is like looks yeah. great. Yeah. Um, and it's um, it has a style. Yeah, and it has a development of a character, but it's not through serious stuff. It's through these exploits. So it's a delightful film to sit through while still getting character development. Um, and it's just and it has a slapstick nature to it. Yeah, this film is a silent comedy mixed with it a, is like a period piece. They break the fourth wall. Um, yeah. It's, um... Like, characters will shrug out the camera. Yeah. yeah. It, it, this film just knows what it is. It goes with it. This is British humor at its just most yeah. prestigious. At, at its classiest, yet, yeah, like, also rowdiest. And normally a film like this wouldn't win an Oscar, so I'm glad it did, because I always like movies like this, but they never yeah. get recognized. But I think, um... The actual, I think the actual, like, um, Tom Jones stories, I think they, I don't know if they were written with tongue-in-cheek or not, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. I remember I looked it up and I don't recall, but, um. They're a lot more fun when they are like that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of books written at this time, mm -hmm. like The French Lieutenant's Woman yeah. was written in the late 60s, that has its tongue in its cheek. It like, does. at first it's written seriously, and then it just sort of says, like, you know, books at this kind of this type of period were way too serious yeah. and, kind of, and they're kind of dumb now, so we're just gonna have fun with it. And then the book starts breaking the fourth wall yeah. and, like, going nuts, and that's what this is. <clears throat> and, like, I remember when <clears throat> I read The French Lieutenant's Woman in class and I said, oh, this this reminded me a lot of Tom Jones, and everyone was like, the singer? And I was like, what? No, why would I say this? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. Um, yeah. <laughs> And yeah, you know the singer. He's very much like the very French much like. Uh, I can't believe you guys did not get like <laughs> sex bomb get that. when I was re <laughs> reading this. But um, yeah. Anyway, I think that it's it's the type of one of a kind. It film, is, yeah. But it also kind of started this trend. It did, yeah. A lot of films, I think, tr can try to be like this, but never one, never one would just be the right sort of comic timing. Because I think Tony Richardson is the right director for Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yeah. And so self-aware that this movie yes. is. That it just hits the and right the actors mark. are self-aware. Yeah. This film, these kind of films really hit the bullseye this one does. Yeah. Which is really an achievement in all of its own. Yeah. Tony, Tony Richardson made an entire movie with his tongue in his cheek. Yeah. And it's like it's spoofing itself too, so therefore yeah. nobody, nobody can spoof this. It does it itself. It's just spoofing like classic literature yeah. and these like period pieces, mm -hmm. costume dramas, and sexual, like those with, these with really sexual, stuffy movies. Yeah, with sexual stuff <coughs> pinned behind yeah. closed doors. This one, it's not so much behind closed doors. No, the door is left slightly open. Yeah, and it has like this. It's not raunchy, but it has no. it is too classy to yeah. be raunchy. But it has it definitely has this like luscious sexual it energy does. to it. If you like British humor, you like this, and I love British humor. Yeah, me too. Um, personally. 
I'm going to go with how the West was won. I, I might go with that, too. Um, I, one, just because I, really, I really... Yeah, I just... I really enjoyed this. Yeah. I know. I remember, like, when I saw it, I'm like, that train finale. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you have to see it, you know, the train finale. <laughs> um, it's just a fun Western, but it's, like, on an epic scale. It is. Um, But every story's interesting. Yeah. Um, and every actor really gets their moment to shine, and so you get to see, so, um, you know, a lot of all-star cast, like, a lot of times for your favorite actor will come on, you don't really get to see them. Yeah. This one, you get to see your favorite actor. Yeah. And, um, even though, like, my favorite actor in this, like, wasn't on screen as, for as much as some other people, is Richard Woodmark. Yeah. But he gets he, his, he gets his scene! He does get to play, like, uh, a, like... It's a part that right, really tough villain. It's, yeah, it's a part reminiscent of his early film roles, so it was kind of like fun to his see. his type of role in uh, Yellow, Yellow Sky. Sky. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And there's a great shot with him on the train as the film progresses yeah. to the future. Um, it's, uh, and yes, it's stunningly shot. It's done by different directors, yeah. but yet it has a continuous storyline. Yeah. So it's, um, so each one has its own little flair, but it's still one movie put together um and so yeah there's a lot of just it's, very remarkable moments yeah it's just it's very visually appealing it's it like is. It, it it is an earworm to like the the score in the song yeah this will be stuck in your head the, forever. yeah the, the score is terrific yeah it's really like you yeah. know you'll find yourself like moving along yeah to like there's an overture song. normally i skip the overtures i didn't for this no i don't want to <laughs> i was like wait <laughs> I, I don't. I don't. I tend not to skip overtures. I tend to stick for for them. Cause well, I, for the yeah. first time I watch him, normally I, I um will, but then the second time I watch him, like skip overture. <laughs> <laughs> but for the yeah, this one, yeah. it's completely different. Yeah, I and watching, you know, when I go back to watch it, like if like if there are times if I watch this film a lot, I don't think mm. I'll ever skip the overture. No, um, me neither. Yeah. Okay, 1964, we have Beckett, Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Wearing and Love the Bomb, <laughs> Mary Poppins, My Fair Lady, Which One, and Zorba the Greek. Objectively, Mary Poppins. I was thinking that too. That's definitely personally. <laughs> and I am personally for me as well. Although, objectively, I'm going to go to Strangelove. Yeah, that one, I mean, that's obviously up there too, because yeah. that one's... Uh, um, recognized comedy, which is yeah. very hard to be at this time. Yeah, it's, um, it's one of those movies that you would think would just be limited <laughs> to the Cold War. It's not. It's, I remember uh, when I saw the trailer, and I'm like, what, what kind of movie is this? <laughs> it's exactly what the trailer advertises. <laughs> it's that. <laughs> it's, um, it's, it's before I even, like, really watched a lot of old movies, I was like, what the hell? What, yeah, what I think is funny about this movie is that it spins more and more out of control as it moves along. It just, it starts pretty normally, and then it gets a little weird, then it gets weirder, then it gets weirder, <laughs> then it gets weirder. And it just keeps getting weirder and weirder and more, more bizarre. And you would think a movie like this wouldn't be much of a commentary, it would just be a commentary mm-hmm. of the time. It it ages really well, in fact. It probably, it's yeah. funny how it uses comedic actors and serious actors, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they're all meshed together. And they didn't tell Slim Pickens <laughs> that he was in a comedy, because they had to switch it yeah. from a drama to a comedy. Thank like, God. Like, a script, yeah, because Failsafe was, was in the works at yeah. the time, and they were like, well, that's a really serious drama, and we And it's a good one, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they were like, well, we don't want to have two serious mm-hmm. movies like this out at the same time, so we're gonna make ours a comedy. Like, a black comedy. Yeah. And they told everyone about it, except Slim Pickin, so his performance is sincere, and it's very hard to believe. <laughs> that's <laughs> what makes like it that. funny! Yeah, <laughs> like, it's one of those added bonuses, like, how they, Stanley Kubrick directed all these scenes with um, George E. Scott, yeah. <laughs> He's told George E. Scott to act his most ridiculous in the first take to get all his, like, you know, sillies out and then to act like he normally would. And then he would use the first take because he <laughs> wanted him to be at his most ridiculous. Like, there's a scene in the movie where he's- Perfectionist he's, Stanley Cooper. Yeah. Was. <laughs> George E. Scott, watching it, said, like, oh, that son of a bitch, he is a genius. <laughs> um, uh, like, there's a scene where um, George e. Scott is so over the top, he's giving, like, the speech, and he trips, and he gets up, and he's like, oh, sorry, sorry. And he, like, gets up, and he keeps going. The hand gestures, too. He yeah, hand the gestures. big hand gestures, yeah. and it's, it's funny. <laughs> so when you think of George e. Scott, you think big, grand yeah. hand gestures. Naturally, I think over the top. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, now we'll talk about Mary Poppins. Yes. Um, this is Disney um, live action at its best, and we love Disney it live action It is Disney film. live action the best yeah. of all of them. Yeah. And, we, and we love them. Yes, um, we do. 
but yeah, more this than one. we should. Man. <laughs> no, we love the appropriate amount. <laughs> um, and so this one was our first favorite movie that we can remember when we were little. Um, even though I guess it's rather long compared to the movies that were coming out when we were little that we yeah. would often sit through. But this one just always had a special place for us. Um, and I can't remember a time when it wasn't in my memory. Yeah. It's... I wonder what it's like to see it for the first time. I can't, I can't imagine going through life without this movie. I know. It's just, it's in my brain. I feel like it's I... It's like going through yeah. life without watching... Like The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, or exactly. Or Music or something, yeah. It's, um... Or Cinderella. <laughs> yeah, or just like, you know, any of those Disney classics, because yeah. it's right up there with them. I it really is. Yeah, I wish... If, <laughs> oh my gosh, if... Disney animation was actually nominated. Guess what? I would pick almost every year. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but um, 1941 would probably be easier. Yeah, 1942, very yeah. easy for me. Two of our favorites. Yeah, yeah. but content. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that as far as live action Disney goes, nothing tops Mary Poppins. No. And it also combines with animation, and it does it so astoundingly. It still looks amazing. Yeah. Um, and the songs are great. Sherman, the Sherman Brothers at their best, and we yeah. love the Sherman yes. Brothers music. Yeah. Um, they did a lot of the, they did all the Disney, like, movies at this time, and so yeah. we they obviously- like, the Jungle Book yeah. and Happiest Million. Yeah, yeah, and we love the songs in those. Yeah. Um, and so- They also did Snoopy Come Home. I they that. did, yeah. yeah. They did. <laughs> Not Disney, but they did They're wonderful, that. aren't yeah. they? Um, but this is them really at their best. Every song- um, you can sing every, you can sing along to every song, and this is how memorable they are. Yeah. Um, and and ev- like I can't imagine watching this movie and not just smiling. Like, I know. The biggest stupidest smile I know. on my face. <laughs> and I can't picture anyone else in this movie but Julie Andrews and Dick Van Dyke. Yes, I don't want anyone else. No. Hint, hint. <laughs> and um, and there's also David Tomlinson, who's yes. always great. Glennis Jones. Yes. Um, Jane Darwell. Edwin. Yep, Edwin. One hell of a supporting cast as well. They really, and they really went all out for this movie, you can tell. Um, and it still looks good. It makes you feel good. This is a winner, if there ever was a winner. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody of all ages can watch this over and over and over again. I'm not, I'm 25 and I'm not sick of it. (laughs) I will never be sick of it. Nope. (laughs) 1965, we have Darling, Dr. Zhivago. Ship of Fools, The Sound of Music, which won in A Thousand Clowns. Chicago, objectively. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to yeah. say that, too. <clears throat> I mean, I hate when people are like, Sound of Music's too schmaltzy to they, win. They can, you know what, they can just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't see eye to eye, clearly. Um, <laughs> clearly, you have no joy in your life. Yeah, you yeah. need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Dr. Chicago is... A glorious achievement in yes. filmmaking, visually stunning. The story is excellent, based off of the novel, um, and the act, the uh, casting, fabulous. Yeah. Um, and Omar Sharif at his best, um, along with Lawrence of Arabia. Mm-hmm. Um, and you also have the wonderful Julie Christie. You have yep. Geraldine Chaplin, Ralph Richardson, Tom Courtney, Alec Guinness, Rod Steiger. Oh my God, what what an amazing cast! Yeah. Really, an all star cast. Yes, and I think I would say after Lawrence of Arabia, this is probably David Lean's best yeah, looking movie, yeah. and that says something because all his movies are gorgeous. yeah, they are. And, um, and yeah. um, you really feel cold watching this. Oh movie. my gosh, yeah. Um, it's like when you watch that one Twilight episode where it gets hotter and hotter and you get really hot watching it. That's what this movie is like, but the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... I remember being bundled up watching this movie. Me too. Me too. I think that <coughs> it's a movie that is so... Because that's just how visually appealing mm-hmm. it is. It, like, you feel the movie, like, rubbing off on you. Yeah, like, you do. The visuals. When, um... You have two be- beautiful stars in the movie, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're filmed impeccably well. Everyone, yeah, everyone's at their best looking in this movie. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, and it's interesting. It's a long, it is like Lawrence of Arabia. It does have length, but like Lawrence of Arabia, yeah. it earns the length. Like the and it, it goes has through several for years. So, like, like Lawrence of yeah. Arabia, so you're not like stuck in like one place for three hours. And like Lawrence of Arabia, Lawrence of Arabia has more action in, mm-hmm. than this, but this does have like you know, some thrills, and it has, um, like, these emotional moments that it builds up to, and it has 
you know, it starts off with the characters and you getting to know the characters and then it builds yeah. up to their relationships to each other. And that builds up to how that affects everything and, mm-hmm. you know, it keeps going. And um, and the Russian Revolution is a very interesting thing yes. to see, too. So it's a, a very um, incredibly um, intriguing backdrop of this love story. Yeah. Now, personally. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go with Ship of Fools. I know you're thinking of Sound of Music, um, but right now I want to say Ship of Fools. Uh-huh. Um, this is a movie that this is my kind of movie. Um, well, if you're not gonna pick the Sound of Music, I don't know. If I... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, I love the Sound of Music. It, it was one of my favorite movies when I was younger. We, we but... broke our VHS tape. That's how many yeah, times that's how we watched talked about. it. That's how long ago it was too. Um, <laughs> but um, with Ship of Fools, um, that one just um, I liked every story in this one. I was very interested in everyone and just how. Yeah, they're all fools. They all, like, just wind up back where they started at the end. So it's a very interesting um, perspective of this voyage. Um, And my favorite part is Vivian Lee in this with Lee Marvin. And Lee Marvin's one of my favorite actors. And Vivian Lee is one of the greatest actresses of all time. And (laughs) she's um, at her best here. I think they both should have been nominated for this. I know Lee Marvin won for Capaloo. Um, I I think he should have been nominated for this one, actually. Um, And... I think um, Vivian Lee should have been nominated, and she wasn't, which is a sin. Um, <laughs> but there, um, but it's l- how all these characters react with each other, and it um, predates World War II. Um, so there's a lot of tension on this ship ride, and the ship's going to Germany. So you can imagine just how um, how tensions rise during this. And every character is interesting. Every character has a backstory that comes through. But in the end, they don't change because this movie has a cynical view of not yeah. letting its people change. So it's um, it takes the whole Grand Hotel interwining storylines and kind of adds the cynical view of separate tables and just keeps that cynical view. Because separate tables, people change. This one, no. <laughs> yeah. But it's an incredibly interesting film to watch. I just remember being glued to the screen. I think personally, I might go with Chicago. Actually, okay, it's hard to say because no, I, that's a great yeah. Movie. Like you, I love the sound of music too, and you know because yeah. you know when you're feeling bad, you just want to pop into the sound <laughs> yeah. of music, like with Mary Poppins. Like yeah, you, know, you feel bad, you want to pop in any up. Julie Andrews movie. Exactly, yeah. just Julie Andrews in general. Just it could just be Julie Andrews standing there and doing nothing. It I make know, you feel better, and I would feel better. Yeah. But uh, even her showing her boobs in SOB, at least she's there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's truly yeah. But um. Uh, I just, I, I, I like a good looking. <laughs> yeah, I know you do. Yeah. And you, your love for David Lean goes yeah, strong. Yeah, it does. Like, I, I know some people, like, there are some people who think that he's overrated, and yeah. No. I don't, yeah, think, so. I don't think so. I think that his movies, are, like, they deserve to be that well yeah. known. And I think it's more people, not so much with his movies, but with his direction. I don't agree at all. I think his direction is stunning. It is. Yeah. Always was. Mm-hmm. Yep. Even like way back when. All right. Okay. So, anything else you want to add? No, I'm good for now. <laughs> <laughs> good for now. Okay. It's not like I'm. I'm not like you're my waiter. <laughs> well, maybe you want something else. Do you want some bread? No. Anyway, <laughs> always bring bread. Don't ask. Anyway. So, do you want to talk about what we are thinking about doing next week? Okay, so we'll be discussing some Riff Raff movies in greater detail. I guess we'll be separating them into some different yeah. segments. We'll probably, maybe we'll do three at a time. This okay, good. yeah. Because um, we're, we're, and just so you know, our language is going to get really bad, because we get mad. <laughs> we're going to get mad. Yeah, I know. And I'm going to, I'm going to drop the F-bomb. So many times. I know, I know I, I Because I'm going to get mad talking about these. I try to watch my language, but I'm very bad at censoring myself. Yeah, I, I when when I'm talking about something I love or hate, yeah. I can't I can't really distinguish. Yeah, I'm never so with much. kids. I never really have to censor myself. Yeah, that's why I can never be a mother. I just <laughs> but so it, for those of you unaware, Riff Raff is a um, it's a blog series. Uh, well, I where I write reviews to movies, the two of us riffed, bad movies that we riffed. We're big fans of the show Mystery Science Theater 3000, and we were like, oh, maybe we should try that. Yeah, we we sat through some real shit. We sat through shit. It, like the, I think we watched, we sat through some mystery science here. Wouldn't touch with a ten foot pole. Clearly, because we sat through. We watched one of them was Child Bride. Yeah, which they refused was, to. Yeah, do. that movie was awful. But of course, we're like, let's do this because <laughs> we're like, 
they want to touch it. Well, now I'm curious. Yeah. So I, like, <laughs> and also cinema snob. Yeah. Even. So we're like, let's do it. Yeah. He, he pushed us. You could. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, if he could do it, we can. No. Yeah. He has much. He has a much better stomach than we do. Yeah. It was. It was gross. <laughs> anyway, we'll talk about those type of yeah, movies. We'll more. get there. So we're we're again thinking about doing three at a time. Yeah. And. And obviously, April will be cartoon month, so we'll yeah. take a we're, break we're gonna and talk s- about those. We're going to spread Riff Raff around a yeah. little bit, I think, because then we'll, we'll just do it every once in a while, yeah. because there'll be ones we want to talk about. We'll be talking about, I guess, some pretty passionate ones first yeah. time around. Yep. And you can, <clears throat> if you want more, if you are a fan of naughty language, you can always read... Um, the blog series if you want to read reviews for bad movies because i keep my language professional on those i mean i'll use words like oh this movie is a piece of crap but i won't say <laughs> like oh this is a you know fucking piece of shit i won't say anything like that because we probably will next week because we will next week we're gonna be saying yeah you know, words are gonna be flying we're gonna be bad at these movies and <clears> take <throat> it out on them yep we're gonna just even though it was it's fun ripping movies sometimes you have to sit through some and awful things as fun as you can have ripping some of these movies it doesn't but when you talk about them on when a critical level them, that is when when yeah. you actually have to sit down and talk about them that's a problem it's like when i have to write use to the mystery science Re- theater 3000 movies and i'm like well i enjoyed watching them riff this absolutely and i would wa- watch it a million them riff it a million yeah. times but holy holy crap, this movie is bad, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, again, if you want to, if you are interested in movie in reviews on bad old movies, you can read, but you don't like foul language, you can definitely read the blog And we'll just series. be talking about old movies again. We riff old movies. Yeah, and we'll, and we will, and again, we're gonna just spread these out, so we'll go back to talking about good movies. <laughs> don't <laughs> worry. Well, we're, we're gonna be doing cartoons. We'll need to talk. We'll need to talk about some good movies. I'm going to need to talk about cartoons <laughs> after after just bad mouthing some of these movies. Anywho, we're so this week on TCM. If you're looking for something to watch, so I didn't recommend anything for the weekend. Bianca has two. I have The Stranger on the Third Floor, which was the first psychological film noir. It's playing twice this weekend, actually. Yeah, they're doing noir alleys. Yeah, twice. Yeah. Um, and so um, this has Peter Laurie in it, and he's very interesting. They make him look kind of funny. So, mm-hmm. um, and it has a real great dream sequence. And then the other one I recommend was Lover Come Back, one of our favorite romantic comedies. We just recently, re- of course, re-watched we did it, yeah. because we love it because it's funny. With Rock Hudson and Doris Day, um, and this is. And with Tony Randall, three. and he's king of the elevator. <laughs> no, yeah. This is uh, if you haven't seen this, please take time and see this. Do yourself a favor. It is funny. <laughs> okay, so until next time, have a good one. Bye.